This is Two Dudes in a Six Pack with your hosts, Grayson and Chris. Tight, 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 yeah. That's good. Join us as we cover a six pack of topics from booze Excellent. to pop culture. Inconceivable. So, pull up a chair and crack open a beer as we discuss the best. Here's to feeling good all the time. Of the worst. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. And we're back. That that's right, everyone, ladies and gentlemen. After I'm pretty sure, like literally a year hiatus, uh, I finally woke up and we're good to go on two dudes <laughs> and a six pack. We are super pumped to be back. It's been a long time coming, but don't worry, we're here for you to get you through the holidays and everything else. But so you got Grace and me, myself over here in Arizona, and my good friend out in Traverse City, Michigan, Chris. That's right. We're back. It's uh, this is uh, kind of crazy to be back right now. It, it feels like this is season two. Yeah, better than is. ever. Yeah, know? yeah. I mean, HBO takes like six years off in between episodes, like between seasons. So I figure this is like you know minuscule compared. Yeah, to that. exactly right. Yeah, this, this is this like, wasn't like an Arrested Development hiatus. Yeah, yeah. This is <laughs> this is version two point bigger and better, and all that good stuff. So, but we figured. We will we'll, like the very first episode of season two. Technically, we're gonna since we are all about making the best of the worst situations. We're just gonna this whole episode is gonna be about bad things, like <laughs> bad stuff, your bad jobs, your bad dates. We all have really crappy situations. We're gonna get through it all together with booze and pop culture. So I feel like that's how could you go wrong with something like that? That's right. I I mean. We all know how bad things can get, and without booze and pop culture, right, I don't think any of us would be here. Oh, no, no. Like, if they're like, okay, Grayson, you got to get through life. We're going to remove your alcohol and all your pop culture. Be like, uh, <laughs> okay, that's when, like, your eye starts twitching, and you're like, uh, we're going we're gonna to have some issues here. <laughs> Grayson, right, get your head out right. of the oven. But, uh, okay, let's just get right into the, I guess, the booze we're going to be cracking open. Um, okay. Okay. Do you want to do you want to go through all of them right now, or just do like one at a time and then kind of broach them as we go? Um, yeah, I can go through. Uh, I've got three of them here. Um, I've got a U Inta Ready Set Goose beer out of out of Salt Lake City, Utah. Nice. Um, Skull Splitter from the Orkney Brewery in Kualu. I don't know where Kualu is. It's not in the United States. <laughs> I know that. And uh, taking it back a little bit to the hometown uh, where I grew up, near there anyway, Rochester Mills Beer Company, a uh, Raspberry Rattler. Nice. Um, so that's what I'm going to be tr- trying out today. All beers designed to get you through either a really bad situation after it's done with, I think. Yeah, that's kind of what we were going with, where it's like, all right, you had like a really crappy day at work. That date you went on is uh, wasn't exactly what you thought it was going to be, and you just need something to be like, pick up your spirits, and with spirits. <laughs> so um, <laughs> right. I, I'm, I am the stuff I'm going with is totally all over the place. A while ago, I picked up this bird dog 10 year old bourbon whiskey out of kentucky and it's hand selected very small batch and normally you don't i know with like with bourbon it's not usually aged like that like the bourbon you're gonna get is maybe two years like i don't i don't even know if jack daniels is two years age it's i think a lot of that has to do with the the weather and the change of everything because the the wood like shifts in the the casks i think it has something to do with it so it's harder to age than like in a Scotland with your whiskey where it's just like sitting at cold, <laughs> colder temperatures. Right. So, yeah. Uh, that is the first one. Um, I guess I'll split it up. I, I just, I grabbed this random beer. It's an Italian beer. You normally don't think of Italy as beer. And it's probably, there's probably a reason for that, but, uh, it's called a uh, Burra more, more Burra more Okay. It's yeah. just got an old like Italian guy from the twenties with a green suit, the the green fedora, drinking a beer. <laughs> recipe since eighteen fifty nine. I was like, you know what? I can, you know, he looks like a, a guy that just had a really bad day at the racetrack, and he needs a beer. So, That's it, like, right? Okay, I'll go for that. And 
The third one, I can't remember if I had done on the show before, but I'm bringing it back if I have. It's called Ardberg. It's from the Isle uh, region of Scotland. It's a Scotch whiskey. This is uh, 10 years aged. And I know I did a book, I went to a book signing with, um, shoot, what's his face? That plays, um, I can't remember the guy's name. <laughs> he plays Ron Swanson on uh, Parks and Rec. And, um, oh, yeah, Nick Offerman. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I went to a book signing, and when he was signing my book, I asked for some, like, Scotch recommendations, and this is one of the uh, brands he recommended. So, Oh, man, you can't go wrong with that one. This is like a, this is literally an Offerman recommendation. This is a that. legit Offerman recommendation. <laughs> so this is, okay. this is like from his mouth to mine to your ears. It's, I mean, it's that delicious. Um, I, that's got to be like hands down the winner right now without even <laughs> us trying anything. Um, I mean, it I think could it, be. It, 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 it definitely could be. Could be. It's, um... Listeners, could, if, they, if they wanted to drop off right now, they, they could comfortably know <laughs> that this that is how you get through a bad day. Listen to Nick Offerman. He gave you a whiskey recommendation. Yeah. That's it. You're, you're yeah. done. That's like my one of my like pr- proud possessions is Nick Offerman's autograph with like Scott's recommendations next to it. <laughs> I'm like, yes. yes, yes, this is awesome. But I'll just say, I'll save that for last. Um, well, we're gonna start off with the bird dog, but I'll let you crack open your beer. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna start off with uh, the Uinta, and I actually looked this up because I had no idea how to pronounce this. It's it's U I N T A, and it is literally pronounced exactly like how it looks, but it doesn't make any sense. The U you actually say, and then it's Inta, uh, <laughs> okay. but it's out of Salt Lake City, so you know I'm not that surprised. Uh, we know <laughs> how that goes out there. Yeah. So I've got this Ready Set Goes. It's a beer brewed with salt and coriander. Okay. It comes in a can. Uh, I've never had it before. I don't think I've had anything out of Utah, honestly, before with beer. So I'm a little apprehensive. I'm purposefully doing this, thinking that I'm going to start off the Bad Days podcast uh-huh. with kind of bad, bad beer. But we'll <laughs> see. We'll see how it goes. I think so, I had, I've right. had one out of Utah before. The beer was called like Polygamy, I think. And That's so, kind of amazing. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, I, don't, it, I can't I remember. I think it tasted all right, but I don't remember it. It's been so long. But yeah. Yeah. You know, opening this thing up, I actually get kind of like a, a bit of that that Belgium uh, Trappist kind of nose feel to it. Okay, nice. So it's kind of seeming promising at this point, but... Okay. And yeah, yep. So it's a ghost beer, which means it's sour. Uh-huh. Uh, but it's, it's good. It, it actually... I'm not really a huge fan of, of the sour beers. Right. There's a company up here called Jolly Pumpkin, and they, they're, like, known for their sours up there. And they're almost too much, but this doesn't feel half bad. Uh, it's it's almost, like, uh, kind of refreshing, I guess. Okay, so they don't, um, it doesn't bludgeon you with the sourness. It's it's not no no okay. but it's uh it's definitely drinkable. Okay, you know, nice. Interesting for not having it before. Uh, I'm not hating it. Okay, nice. I'm gonna I'm gonna initially pour the bird dog straight, no ice, and then I'll sip on it. And then if it needs a little watering down, I'll add an ice. I'm I'm normally not. I think well, really, it depends with me and adding water or ice to a scotch bourbon or whiskey whatever your it is sometimes it doesn't need it other times it's just like ooh this is <laughs> it needs it needs a little opening man but right uh, let's yep. see i'm going to pour this and i'll say right off the bat i'm generally more of just a like a a single malt scotch kind of fan I guess, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I don't mind the the blended stuff. You know, your Johnny Walkers is, you know, like a Johnny Walker Black, I think, is a great uh, whiskey to, or scotch to have on hand that isn't super expensive. I think you can get, like, a black label for, if you look around, for, like, 28, 30, between 28 and 35 or something like that. Yeah, that's not bad. Which isn't, isn't terrible. Um, I think I b- paid about 35 for the Bird Dog, but I've had it for so long. I was going to make, uh, like, an old-fashioned... But it's it that that hasn't happened. <laughs> but <all right. laughs> give it a try. I'll ask you a question about this old fashioned after you after we hear what this this is like. Okay, I, I'm uh, you know smelling it first. You definitely can smell the heat. <laughs> um, oh yeah. So all right, let's get and it's. I'm sure I I said it's. Yeah, I did say it was ten years age. But okay, let's give it a sip. <clears throat> oh, 
You know, it's not bad. You in when you it hits your, I mean, it hits your nose first, and you really get that. You know, anybody that's had you know scotch or whiskey or whatever without mixing it knows that like tingle you get in your nose when you know you you bring it up to your mouth, and you get kind of like that the charcoaly smoky flavor in your mouth. But it didn't burn at all, really going down. It was actually oh, nice. relatively yeah. smooth. You have a little bite to it, but it's not like that thing that's like clawing at your esophagus as it goes down, like you're like <laughs> you're trying to push it down and it's fighting its way back up. <laughs> right. It's, it's, it's not like that. So I've, this is a. I think I, I'm enjoying this. This is a nice bourbon that you don't need. I mean, if you want to drop a few water in it, or if you're, not, you're an ice cube person, you know, I'm not gonna hate on it as long as yeah, it's not yeah. like super watered down. But, um, right, right. I know there's one. T- n- <laughs> there's one. I, I just let me hold on. Let me throw this in real quick. There's uh, one time I was at a bar and I asked for Johnny Walker Black with just like a splash of water. I was I was feeling a little, just a little water. The dude yeah. poured it over ice and then added water. I was like, God, <laughs> you- <laughs> it's like you just ruined this drink, yeah, dude. Yeah. So. <laughs> But I don't, okay. <laughs> Where did ice even enter the equation? It's like, with no, that? Well, I did not ask for it on rocks or anything. I just said. Was it the crushed ice too, like the bar ice? It, it was like it was like yeah, the super crushy stuff that you get oh, in like uh, if you go to like Sonic, it was like that kind of ice. And it's yeah, just like, yeah, yeah. There was yeah, it was just like oh man, kind of just like a dick move from this bartender. It's like were you with somebody? I can't even remember it now. It's been so. I think <laughs> I was so traumatized by the the adding of ice and water. It's like right. Well, I don't oh. so. Yeah, but I'm Terrible. sorry, man, I cut you off. What were you getting into? No, I was just going to say, you know, I'm with you on this. Like, if you want to add a, a little bit of water, some ice, that's your thing. But uh, a bourbon like that, you know, with that kind of smooth, I would just room temp that thing and just enjoy it. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's been, I mean, especially, yeah, like like bourbon is generally not aged that long. It's harder to age it, which is why you don't see a lot of, 10 12 15 year old bourbons but you see i mean if you get an eight year old scotch it's like whoa whoa hold on yeah That's right only yeah. eight years get that out of here right, you know exactly. but bourbon it's like it's been aged six months put it on the shelf before you know the the casks start splitting but it's right but i was gonna i didn't find this at the store i, I so i use this app called uh ibotta or whatever i think it's i-b-o-t-t-a um i can include a link to it I mean, we're going to post this on YouTube as well, so you can check it out. But it's like a shopping app that'll give you like cash back for buying stuff. And there's a lot of uh, yeah. like, like, um, sorry, my dryer just went off. <laughs> there's a lot of like, um, booze on there. And so it's actually great for buying alcohol because some, if I go to buy a Johnny Walker, you get like $5 cash back, which is pretty legit. And they had this, um, uh, I can't remember the kind of scotch. It was like a single malt scotch, but an IPA. So they take the scotch and they put it in IPA barrels and age it then in that. And I'm just like, weird. I, I don't know if how that's gonna how that would work, you know? No, does it work the opposite way? I have I've no heard... idea. Like, does it take the the some bitterness out of it? I, I don't. I have. So I was gonna try to find that, but I, I didn't see it when I went to the store. Interesting. But yeah, and then it was like ten bucks cash back. So I'm like, well, that's cool. I'm always well. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Got me right there. Right, exactly. I'm very civil-minded when it comes to that. Yeah, yeah. I like cash back. <laughs> I know cash back was all you had to say. I'm good with it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and the app's legit, guys. I, I've gotten a lot of money back from it. So you know, uh, we can in- include a link. <laughs> so right. I bought it. I got. I've not used it. So yeah, okay. I'll have to check that out too. Yeah, I'll send. Yeah, I've. I've I think in like six months, I've gotten like two hundred bucks cash back. It's actually kind of. There you go, man. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, think how much alcohol you can buy with two hundred dollars. Right. Or just at the end of the year, you treat yourself to like a, a blue label or something where it's like, I've never, there you go. I've never yeah. had a blue label before. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. You got to do it at least once. I'm, I'm like working up towards it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't been able to justify that yet. I had nothing good enough to happen in my life to, that would justify that kind of a purchase yet. Uh, but someday. Yeah. Someday it's going to happen. Yeah, usually it's just bad stuff. So, which is why we're drinking. We got to get into the bad, <laughs> the bad things. And we all are used to bad jobs. Even if we have awesome jobs now, we've had bad jobs in the past. So we're gonna discuss our bad jobs. And um, I don't know about you, but my first bad job was probably my first. It was a newspaper delivery route. 
I delivered uh, what they called the Town Courier, which is like a weekend BS newspaper that nobody actually reads except, right. you know, all the retired citizens that, you know, write letters to the editor. But the worst part, so it wasn't that, you know, the, the crappy part about just doing it on the weekends, which is, you know, whatever, it's a newspaper route. They actually made you go and try to collect donations from oh, the door. So you had to go door to door, knock on this place, and be like, you know, this paper you get for free, could you give me money for it? <laughs> and then they gave you like they, they gave you like a ten percent cut of it, which was like, really? I I'm walking door to door and you're gonna give me like a dime for this buck they just gave right. me. Right. It's like, for this thing that they're already throwing away. Yeah. <laughs> how do you know? Th it's like, how do you even know? I should have just, I was young and naive. I actually gave it to him. I should have just pocketed it all. I'm like, nope, no donations. Nothing. <laughs> this was like the age of like, there's not like an app they could have gone to, to like donate. You're getting probably straight cash. Oh, it straight was, yeah. Cash donations. Just straight cash donations. It's either cash donations or the people be like, I don't want this anymore. Which technically, <laughs> right. if you don't deliver it to them, that was like, I think it was like seven cents or 10 cents per house you'd do. So that'd be like money out of your pocket. And you know, at, when you're like 12 years old, that's like, you're like, that's 40 cents a week. That's going to be like, that's like, 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 like two bucks during the summertime. I can't do that. So you just don't, you just, wouldn't, man. You, you just wouldn't tell them. It got to the point where, you know, I was, you know, supposed to be <laughs> delivering like 200 newspapers. It was actually, I was delivering like 40. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. And and then uh, until like everyone has that 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 stupid nosy neighbor, and they the the nosy neighbors saw the newspapers that were going into recycling, and they called the place to report me that the newspapers were going into recycling, not being delivered, even though I was told not to deliver them. I was just I don't know. Technically, I was collecting cash, and you know, not <laughs> whatever. But right, yeah. Technically, we can see where you know. I get it, but at the same time, the neighbor, man, what is he doing? Why is he doing this? It's like, like, yeah, butt out of this, butt out of it. Yeah, dude, just let him, let me have my thing, man. I'm not hurting, I'm not delivering all these to you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was the beginning of my hatred for work, which was job number one. <laughs> Isn't that kind of like how it starts? Job number one is like the worst job. Yeah. It's the worst one always. Yeah. You're just setting yourself up. I don't know what, I maybe. I, I would be hard pressed to find one person that was like, oh, I loved it. I got my first job it was amazing. I loved work every day, ever since then. Yeah. Like, no, you didn't. No. What no. he likes work, <laughs> dude. My first job was uh, I was the bag boy at a Kroger grocery store mm. in Grand Blanc, Michigan, and uh, and this was it. Not only did it create in me the similar kind of just hatred for work and and jobs in general. Uh huh. But uh, it also created some of this like subversive, stick it to the man type mentality <laughs> that just kind of festered later on. Yeah, because like we had this one thing. This is an example. They've had to p they put us on uh, on orphan duty, right? So we had to take the cart full of all the items that people picked up during mm -hmm. the day and didn't want to actually buy when they bought them up to the store. Oh. So they would just go in this cart, uh -huh. and you would have to then go back and put all this crap back on the shelf. Uh, but my cousin and I, we figured out that if you asked to be put on orphan duty, they would basically just let you do it. And then I would spend literally the next like four or five hours of my shift uh -huh. just slow playing <laughs> the entire orphan cart. Right, yeah. And just like, yeah, like it was not, there was no sense of urgency. I would walk up and down the same aisle probably like a hundred times. Mm -hmm. But hey, man, it, it meant that I could just get done and, and just be done with it. Right, and he looked busy too. I had a cart full of stuff. Every time somebody was like, "Hey, dude, there's a spill on this one aisle," and I'm just like, "Hey, man, I'd love to help you out." And you see all these orphans I got. And <laughs> I mean, what do you want me to do? Right? Yeah, yeah. Somebody's got to do it. <laughs> the worst jobs are just those. The first jobs are the worst jobs ever. Yeah. Always. Yeah. I mean, you give kids like a cool job right out the gate. No, not at all. No. I mean, unless you're working for somebody's, like, family member. I know I did that mm -hmm. in high school where we were, like, painting these guys, uh, friends, uh, parents, like, apartments that they owned or whatever. So we just, like, paint the apartments and then just screw around because there's, like, five of us. And, I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, that's fine when you just, like, cash under the table and you're just, you know, whatever. But once you actually have real jobs, that's when it starts getting, like, ugh. Like. <laughs> Seriously. I remember these guys were talking to me about unionizing, and I'm like 16 years old. 
It's like, what, what do I know about the union? Yeah. And they were like, all trying to make me like join it and everything. It was like, I don't know, man. I'm just like, I'm just getting enough money to buy a comic book every now and then. And right. You know, have a little bit of spending money. Yeah. That, that was the nice thing when you were that young. You, just, you suddenly got cash. You got, oh, you got, you got hard it money in your eight. pocket, man. Yeah. It's like, yes. Which usually all just went to like fast food or something, but you know. Whatever. Oh, I, I wasted every cent of every dollar I made in in my younger days. Yeah. <laughs> like, just <laughs> maybe save up to like buy a VHS tape or something. <laughs> like, oh, Jurassic Park special edition VHS right. tape. There's two tapes. Yeah. Yes. Right. Like, I'm going to watch all these special features without being able to fast forward and switch. I'm just going to sit here and watch it. <laughs> Yep. Yep. <laughs> but then, of course, that progressed us to, into our pita pit days, which is where Chris and I met. The uh, oh yeah, the glorious. Pita. I mean, there was some kind of fun stuff in that, and then there was just some really just like, ugh, you know. We we made a we made pretty much what was it just a terrible situation in college? Yeah, a shared terrible situation. Like nobody really liked it. Right. Into actually like an okay thing. Yeah. At the end of the day, that was one of those jobs that was made bearable depending on who you're working with. Like, yeah, because you'd always have like two other people there. There'd be like one other person in the shop or in the, in the restaurant, and then one like delivery driver who you know might be there. Or they might just go out and get high somewhere, which was a, a lot right. of the delivery drivers. It's a like, lot of them did. Yeah, yeah, which is like, uh, you know, okay, just do that in the back and come out and hang out or something. But right. yeah, that was definitely one of those. It just all depended on who you're working with. It did. We had some good crew. If it was you and me, and you were a delivery driver a lot of the time, but in the days that you were in the kitchen, those were okay days. Those were okay. We could make the most of it. Sometimes, spoiler alert for anybody after the fact, it involved some boozing <laughs> during the shift, uh, uh, but we made it yeah. work. Yeah, thank they goodness were. for that what unlimited else? Coke, this uh, you know, fountain machine in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. Right. But we were working the, the drunk shift anyways. I feel like we were only giving ourselves the edge we needed to actually get through oh, the entire thing. When you have to deal with a lineup of like 50, 100 just drunk off their ass college kids, you just you got to be a little as well. Otherwise, you're just like, I'm going to kill all of you. I'm sorry. You're all. Exactly, I right. I, I hate I hate you all. So yes. and of course that shift was always there was it was a Thursday night that was never actually my shift I would just come in and ask the girl that would work with you be like yo you want you want off I can, I can just take your shift and right. like right. it got to the point where she'd almost like depend on me showing up so she she would like make she's plans. like disappointed yeah. when you when you had other plans yeah it's like I'm sorry I actually have something I have to do but yeah right. that was that was like my favorite shift and there was never one that I was given it was just you know I'd show up I'd let her go. It would be the only shift of the week that I wasn't delivery driving, and we would just, like, hang out and, like, kill time until, like, the crazy, you know, dinner rush came in. And we'd always try to sweet-talk people into tipping us, and it was it was glorious when we get, like, more tips than the delivery driver. because <laughs> Right, which we're getting, paid, happen. we're getting paid more per hour because they're getting making money off tips. But, you know, we'd just be like, I don't know, that was always great. You know, just oh, action. there were some days where you and I walked out of there with like, and this was it's not a bar, mind you, yeah. you know, but we were like 50 bucks cash a night, yeah, yeah, that was each. <laughs> that... I mean, like, some people dropped like over 100 bucks in that jar at the end of the night, oh, it wasn't they're... like a you know, it's not like we were there for eight hours, the yeah. shifts are short, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course I would I'd work the register and and then you'd be like making stuff and then when I get get a chance I'd go down and help you, but I, I can't tell you how many times somebody would be like paying and they'd be like Yo come here come here and I'd lean in a little bit and they're like that guy down there, that guy's so high how, how high how high is he right now he's got to have some weed right I'm like he's not high he's drunk <laughs> there's a to- there's a huge difference. Major difference. <laughs> There's a major difference. People were always trying to buy. We should have just started trying to like throw some oregano, do the old oregano in a bag thing, and try to just do it that way. Because yeah. we got solicited for that. Like it was at least one customer every shift would would ask about it. Yeah, yeah. And granted, like when I get tired or something like that, like I've got that sort of, you know, that that guy is smoked a lot of weed. Look, uh-huh. <laughs> like I don't know. Oh, what it is, but I can see where it was coming from. Yeah, yeah. It happens. Man, I just didn't have the, uh, 
we just we weren't that well connected. <laughs> of course, we were at least smart about what we were doing. Like when we'd leave, we would like bring the alcohol with us. I know. Oh, it, yeah, right. Most of the times, I'd also work like the day shift. So I, a lot of times on those Thursdays, I'd actually have to be at the back at the restaurant in like eight hours. Yeah, like, dude, yep. you know, whatever. And I can't tell you how many times like the the boss would come up and like open the refrigerator, and somebody from the from the <laughs> other night before would leave like a fifth of ninety nine bananas or something in it, and he's, he's just like, "What is this? What is this?" I'm like, "Oh, these people are despicable. How could they? How could they do that? It's terrible. Dude. I don't know." Uh, but nobody got nobody got like canned for it though. I don't think. No, but it, no. it it was still like it, it was one of those mistakes where you're you're just like you're gonna ruin a good thing for all of us, right? Yeah, like stop with with this. Yeah, it was <laughs> there's so many. They just I don't know. Common sense was not necessarily a, a big commodity for the the pita pit staff. Most of them you just no. kind of like gotta like bonk in the front of the head. It's like, dude, come on, man. <laughs> right. Just, just a yeah. little. Come on, you gotta pay. <laughs> <laughs> Pay attention a little just, bit. Just give me like ten percent effort on this, man. That's all I'm asking for. Yeah, this is this is not rocket science. We're just we're making glorified sandwiches, man. That's it. That is it. Yeah, uh, but <laughs> but what about y- your post Pita Pit days? How have those work days? You have to have some <laughs> not great work days. Oh that. man, yeah. It, it, you know, it comes and goes depending on, on what the situation is. Mm. I work a lot of times with some of these business owners and it, it's just like, it's coming becoming apparent to me that like just people like to make just dumb decisions uh, yeah. in general. Uh-huh. And you know, it's going to be work out bad. The roles that I play nowadays, like everything's advisory for me. So I can only just give advice to these guys and let them just kind of, do what they're going to do anyways right if they follow the advice everything's going to be okay uh, the problem is most of the time they don't want to do it they want to do it their way and so it'll always end up being like just something dumb some mistakes that'll happen and, and any one of these mistakes that happens ultimately just ends up something else that i have to take care of right for these guys so it's it's just like a never-ending thing man it's more and more it's like what are how did I get stuck doing this. I got to figure out a, a better way than this. Right. Oh, yeah, I know. And the problem is you can't be like hiding, you know, fifths of 99 bananas in your desk anymore. You know, <laughs> right, that, exactly. that is not no, allowed. It doesn't work. You would get it fired doesn't. most likely would if you're, you know, just this isn't the sixties where you're, you know, mad menning it up and you got just scotch in your desk. Oh, yeah, right. You know. <laughs> I don't get out of like a hard meeting and then just go back to my office, shut the door, and then just pull out a bottle and drop it on my desk. Yeah, start smoking like, and sexually harass through. the uh, the right, you know the exactly. secretaries that get in here. <laughs> oh man, I can't even imagine those days. Dude, can you even <laughs> imagine what kind of complaints would be coming out oh, nowadays? Man, yeah, that would be like the 60s. Yeah. If... <laughs> That'd be yeah. It, it's just been nonstop the last few weeks. Once that Harvey Weinstein whatever thing came out, it's just been like. Poof. Now that guy's probably drinking a whole lot. That guy's talking. <laughs> that guy, that, if he's not, he really should be. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what what do these guys do, man? Did they have like a monkey paw situation where they were like, yeah, we'll give you a bunch of money and you can kind of do whatever you want for a little bit, but one of these days, right, it's gonna come back to you, and this is this is the day apparently. I don't even know who like the person was that broke that decided to like rat him out, and everyone else is like, "Oh yeah, I should do that too." <laughs> right, right. Uh, th- th- I have like an interesting. I've got. It's weird to talk about this because I'm gonna sound like I'm a total. Uh, I'm not a good person. <laughs> I just I don't understand though why it took the one person to do it. For everybody else, then, to just start remembering and be like, yes. Like, has it never been okay to talk about? Like, am I just... It, right. it's, it's an honest question. Like, I, I just... I'm not trying to be insensitive, but at the same time, it's like... I'm having a hard time being sympathetic to everybody when you all just stood by and let it happen. And apparently you all knew about it. Right, yeah. And, I mean, I think with some of the people, they're just like, if I say anything, I'll never work in this industry ever. Like I kind of yeah, did my job. Right. And so some of them I make, you know, okay, but Angelina Jolie, like you totally could have come out and said something like a long time ago, you're a big enough name where you could have been like, yeah, this guy is a jackass. 
and seriously whatever. it's like so that maybe there's just some like uh crazy i don't know there's gotta be I don't here's know, the thing man. you can't tell know. me that was the that's the only producer that's doing that you know there's a whole bunch of other guys they're like just sweating bullets like oh man yeah just uh, waiting for their next thing. I mean, like right. Kevin Spacey, that guy's screwed now. Um, you know, all that. I don't know when th- that decided to happen, but that guy's career is pretty much done now. And so, it's yeah. Just, I don't know. I mean, his publicist dropped him. I think HBO's dropped. Like, they're going to end House of Cards. Oh, yeah. But it, yeah, but that's what I mean. Like, what did it take? Like, suddenly now it's okay. Like, it should have always been okay uh-huh. to come out and talk about this kind of stuff. Right. And it, it sucks that it wasn't, and I get it. But. I just these tipping points are just so fascinating for me. It is interesting, like well, what made it happen? Of course, you know you had Corey Feldman. He's like, I've been talking about this for twenty years. No one was listening yeah. to me. <laughs> exactly. It's like, well, maybe if you just like brush the coke out of your nose for a little <laughs> bit, Corey Feldman, for like the times, yeah. then maybe they yeah. would have paid attention. Yeah. What, you can't now come back after your, your Playboy glory days and be like, I knew it, and I try to tell everybody. Like when like, when Carrie Fisher tries to give you a drug intervention, you know there's an issue there. It's like, oh man, <laughs> right, you got so- <laughs> right. <laughs> but, See, I- so this, I'm gonna be really disappointed if guys like Lucas start falling in this kind of thing, though. Oh yeah, yeah. I think that guy's such a loner. He <laughs> he wouldn't even know what to do. Like like, I, I'm with you on that point. I really think he's kind of just. You know, but like Spielberg, Lucas, these like these guys that I really look up to. Right. In all fairness, Weinstein, like the guy, always just kind of seemed like the typical sleazebag Hollywood producer. Oh, yeah. the guy that somehow got into power, so you always had to sort of play nice with them, anyways. Uh-huh. But really, what did he ultimately kind of do? Right. On his own. Yeah, uh, that's. A I good, don't know. That's a good question. He. W- <laughs> Let's just say some of the people that went out with him had some pretty bad dates. <laughs> yes, <laughs> some That's horrible I, dates. <laughs> slide into our next topic of really bad dates that you really got to drink afterwards with. <laughs> oh, man. But uh, I'll, I'll kick it off, I guess. One that sticks with me is, so um, I don't remember how I met this person. I think it was maybe it was through like OK Cupid or something like that. This was years ago. And, yeah. And... Um, Meet up with this person at the, at this bar. I had like a, a kind of like a go to bar. That's like oh, I'll just meet up there, whatever. And literally after five minutes, and I, and I was saying, yeah, you know, I was you know looking for a new place, whatever. She invites me to move in with her. Not even kidding. After five minutes, and she tells me that she tells me, don't worry, there's plenty of room. Oh, there's plenty of room in the double wide. I'm like, okay, that's. Oh. <laughs> I appreciate it. And then that that was just weird, really. Really weird. Maybe you can't just like straight up invite somebody to the double way on the first date. Yeah, and to like move in, legit, like to move like, in, right? Like, no, uh, uh, thanks. The but... double wide is always like, yeah, we can go back to my place. Um, it's like a temporary place though, so when you see it, like, don't think, yeah, that this is my place. Eventually, it's not gonna be my place. That kind of thing. <laughs> Not just like the straight up, hey, you should move in, and it's a double wide. Yeah. <laughs> and all of a sudden, who's jumping at this? Like, what other dates has this girl been on? And it's like, oh, yeah, that sounds, <laughs> woo, that sounds yes. me. Yes. yes. You made it, dude. Yes. Wait, why didn't you take that offer? I, what happened? <laughs> I'm kind of kicking myself this? now. I was like, man, I missed out on that one. Ah, right. Man. <laughs> uh, but what about you? What kind of uh, dates, bad, bad man, date? Dates are always kind of, so I'm, I'm not like, uh, this is probably one of the weakest spots uh, of, well, of me in like general. have been 50 years, so. Yeah, know. exactly right. So that's, <laughs> so this is reaching like way back. Uh-huh. And this is actually, this is actually me just being a straight bad date. Um, so this is a little bit embarrassing, like, it, but it just, it's one of those moments where you're, it's like an out of body experience uh-huh. where you're kind of just like yelling at yourself and uh, you know, you should have done something, but for whatever reason, just like the, the fates were just not with me that day. So like this was, uh, I was, uh, I'd been kind of just like hanging out with this girl for a while. She'd come and see me at Michigan state, mm-hmm. uh, met her through like a mutual friend and got the actual invite to, to hang out with her. Cause she went to a different school than I did. So uh-huh. I, I like drove out to see her and everything like that. We went to dinner and, uh, and the whole time I'm missing every single, uh, every signal. 
Okay. That she was just sort of thrown at me. And so I'm looking at it, and I'm just like, I'm, I'm like, if I think back on it, it's like, I was like such a horrible date for this person. Because <laughs> like at the end of it, I'm like, I'm literally like, I'm in her room listening to music, just the two of us. Uh-huh. And I can't, I can't pull the trigger. What happened? Right. Yeah. Yeah. She has to just think the whole, like, I just, I don't know what happened. Like I said, everything, it was just like stacked up right there. 100%, like, fastball right down the middle, and I right. just, like, left pass, strike three, and left. Yeah. Like, just flat awful. And then felt bad about, like, I was like, why didn't she call me back? And then looking back, it's like, well, maybe it's because you were just, like, a horrible, horrible date, dude. Like, yeah. you were just the worst date. <laughs> of course, when you're young, it's like, you don't know. You know, you didn't have yeah, the, no, I the mean, internet wasn't really a dating thing, so you couldn't, like, look up, you know, ten reasons why she didn't call me back. It was just like, you know, it's just like, you're on your own. Like, yeah, like straight up, man. And like, I, I was like, this was a complete failure, a total failure. She was nice and everything like I Nothing, you know, mm-hmm. nothing on her. I imagine she had plenty of uh, things to say about me afterwards, but right. it's like, what do you want me? To do? <laughs> so I kick myself about that when I just kind of look back on it. Mainly just because I, I feel like I made her feel like just like just like what else do I have to do this guy like uh-huh. just like you know just start throwing clothes on the floor like what what else needs to happen for this guy to get it <laughs> yeah <laughs> like like fling the thong into your face like <laughs> like come on man exactly. like, like, yeah. <laughs> I think you should make a move right now but why is, okay <laughs> right. okay hold on why is it up to that dude now I feel like so many dudes getting called out for like like sexual misconduct that it's almost safer just to let the girl make the move now it's like I, I don't want to I don't want to be taken to court and sued for everything I own because I misinterpreted something that you did or said that right. that doesn't constitute anything it's like I uh I mean because every like the first time you, you go on to kiss somebody there's a big like like question oh, mark yeah, man. Like, you that's... don't know it's like this is either gonna go this is gonna go one of two ways and, <laughs> that is it like, you're at a point of no return at that point like and if it goes the bad way it's like does that it's like uh, he sexually harassed me he tried to kiss me it's like i uh, uh right right uh, hmm. yeah no man so that's that's exactly that's exactly right so one, one of the dates that did go well uh-huh. was uh um it went like 50 50 okay. i'll only bring this up because of the end of the story but it's when i met uh, who would later become my wife, Emily. Okay. But I did make the move there. Like, um, I met her at this party. We started hanging out. Mm-hmm. Um, she invited me and my buddy back up to, to her apartment. Oh, to man, she invited food. both of you. <laughs> right, right. Oh. To have some food. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, I made the – I did end up making the move. Got the number. Uh-huh. Um, s- small little kiss on the – you know, whatever right. but i as we're leaving my buddy writes on her uh on her refrigerator with the refrigerated letter magnets that she had uh-huh. carol is gay on there <laughs> but he left that message afterwards because he was so salty uh-huh. about about the uh the way this went um so you know it's i've never had like great fantastic that actually that ended up working out just fine but right but some slight sabotage man the supposed buddy you know, writing horrible things about me on the refrigerator. That's one of those things where you have to have like hand signals or something. Be like, okay, do you want this? Or do I take it? Like, yeah, right. Like, I figured like it was. This was I initiated everything. Right. Like this was all. It was all me at this point. So anything else would have been like uh, there probably should have been some trouble afterwards. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you have to have some kind of understanding. Yeah, you know. I know, I know there was one time where me and my buddy Ryan were at actually the same bar that I would take people for our first dates, and we're sitting at the bar, and this nice, attractive girl sits you know, sits next to us, and we're kind of conversing back and forth, so it's, I don't remember who's sitting next to who, but it's me and him, and then her, and we're talking, whatever, and you know, things are going really well, and uh, then she kind of leaves, and we both look at each other, and it's like, she definitely thought we we're both gay. It's like, yep, yep, because none <laughs> right. of us took command of the situation. It's like, yeah, I should have bowed out, Probably. man. That that's that's that was just, you know, one of those things. <laughs> I think just dating with guy for guys in general is just is a horrible situation. Girls are not making this any any easier for us at all. Right. And so I'll call out the uh, the, the time you and I were in uh, Windsor. Uh huh. 
And, and we tried to make this move. We bought this girl that, that one absence shot, and she ended up just walking up with some other guy at this point. Because her boyfriend was like in the bathroom or something like that. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, like, how do we know these things? All girls we don't know, know that these they can things. get just free stuff out of you. They know oh, it. Oh, yeah. They know it. it. They do. They do. I've got gullible, that whole thing. It's like, that guy looks high and also that he would buy me stuff. So yeah. I'm going to go talk to him. And that was not a cheap shot from what I remember. I feel like that was like one of those like $20 like woo shots. But, yeah, you know, for a right. No, town, it, it's a it, lot of cash. For a lot of cash. And granted, like, uh, that's not the reason why, you know, we were out and about. But mm -hmm. at the same time, it was like a, another just curveball in this in this situation where it was like, what the hell, man? I would have totally missed this thing. Yeah. I would have just gotten hosed again. Yeah. That's I would have gone home and started just crying into a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> you just, you just got to play the game and, you know, see what happens. That's just right, <laughs> and hopefully you don't get flagged for targeting and kicked out. <laughs> so, man, you've been ejected. You cannot play right. the next game. Sorry. <laughs> uh, there should be some dating referees, though. In general, I think I think yeah. life would be much better if there was uh, like just a group of people that were just hanging out with people and would just throw flags when there's something dumb happening. Yeah, dude, we should. Uh dress up as referees and just go up to like what is obvious like a tinder date and just like throw the yellow flag and burp, blow the whistle and <laughs> do yeah. something and then just leave and see like be like wait wait what Get, what just happened yeah we'd have to call some kind of a foul though we need the little microphone thing because that's always fun uh -huh. and then just leave and then just let the pieces fall where they may on that <laughs> point See, we're gonna have to like attach a, a like a video blog, whatever, to our podcast because I think last time we yeah. were talking about the two of us going into like a fraternity sorority like party. Next time we're together, yes. and, like, recording that, yeah. Which the two of us, we will see each other in like a month, so this right, is possible. We, I think, we're gonna have to like <laughs> video blog our like exploits or whatever. And I do think the uh, <laughs> the referee throwing the flag would be great. <laughs> Or you just go up to the table, not even, and just kind of look at both, and just say, "You could do better," and leave, and not say which one, and then just have them be like, "Right." right. So now they're both thinking, "Could I do better? Like, what am I doing?" I like, maybe I could do better. Like, that, that's weird. <laughs> well, what are you gonna do? I like it. Yes. We'll, right. We'll think of something. <laughs> I'm trying to think if I have any. I, I'm kind of drawing a blank on my bad date stories. I know I got. I have to have some. <laughs> oh, I'm just like sad, bad and sad. Now they're just yeah, and now mine are just like boring married dates. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> you know, there's there's no real like there's it's not really there's nothing at stake anymore, uh -huh. right? Like. You just kind of, yeah, is what it is situation. Yeah. There's no cards Although that's not table. completely true. I mean, maybe, that's you not get, maybe you get lucky later in the night because the date went well or you don't. So Yeah, it's, right. It's it, That's really the only thing that's like left on stake. It's it's either going to be like, this is going to be, it's going to go one of three ways. Uh -huh. We're just going to just have fun and that's fine. Or I'm going to say something stupid. I'm going to ruin it for probably a week or two <laughs> after that. Or it'll go, or it'll go well, and and whatever, and you know, no, no harm, no foul there. But yeah. it's not like the old days, man. Oh yeah, where well, there's actually you're playing for something. You're <laughs> yeah, right. And you're like you're playing for home field too. It's like man, if I could go to like, but then then do you want home field advantage? Because then you can't sneak out. You got to wait for them to leave. Like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. You got a whole. So, so, what was your preference? Would you rather invite the person over so you have home field, you know where everything's at, but you're kind of dependent on when they leave, or do you prefer the other way, where you can sneak out if necessary? Yep, yeah, I always, I always preferred uh, the away field. Okay. Because, like, when I was, you know, I met Emily in college, uh -huh. so most of my dating was with her in college. Okay. It was easier for me to go there, whereas having her come over, I always had to make sure roommates weren't around. Ah. We had like, you know what I mean. So it was a little bit more of a like, I don't know. I, I just felt like uh, things were more likely to go my way if if I was <laughs> I was a, 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 on an away game. Right. I feel like the roommate situation, the other the members on your team play a big part on if you want it home field or away like okay i got the <laughs> everyone's still at they're still at the place that i don't know if it's gonna go well 
<clears throat> Thankfully, I never, I have never really had too many roommates, so that was never a problem. Yeah, yeah. They had to be. It was always the kind of roommate too. Ah, uh, yeah. Like, cause some of them were all right, but some of them were just. You just knew they were just gonna ruin the whole thing. Yeah, because I think it's some funny. way. It's like, what, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, no, it was always that was always uh, an interesting thing. I was always kind of a case by case guy with that. Right. Ultimately, with Emily, it was always like an away situation. Mm-hmm. It is nice when you're at your place. You know what kind of booze you have on hand. You're like, okay, we do have more tequila. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I that's also bad. like. I, I also like the uh, the 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 home situation because while you had to wait for her to leave, you could always kind of just like get up and do your own thing a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You know, and just kind of like almost, you know, be like, yeah, I'm just gonna kind of do what I want to do right yeah. now. If and that's not the good cool, thing is, you if you go. really like the person, you could like cook some kind of breakfast that would, that would yeah be like, right like extra points so like woo like i always had a few um oh man i got a great story now i gotta get into it in a second but i would always have a few um like things on hand just in case just in case right but the, <laughs> well so okay so one time i was out with a buddy and um we're at this bar in Lansing called the Tin Can, which is they just sell beer in cans. And um, we met these two girls. They are pretty cool, you know. We and we and we, being at this point experienced enough to like kind of basically like okay, you that one, me that one, okay, like break, okay, we got it, good game plan. <laughs> and so you know we're doing our thing, dancing, whatever. And they're like, okay, we're gonna use the bathroom. It's like okay. Is you know, girls go in pairs, they leave, and we're both like, all right, this is going pretty well. Like, we've been hanging out for at least the last hour, and they haven't left yet. That's always a good, that's, <laughs> praise Jesus, that's a good sign. <laughs> right, and so, right. they come back, and they switch. The other one comes to my, to me, and, and then mine goes to him. And so, just like, we're both kind of like... All right, they they oh, called. Man, they had their own like. They called an audible in the bathroom. <laughs> they called an audible. They, they called an audible. It's like, <laughs> right. all right, whatever. We're both, and we don't care. It's like whatever. Um, now we can use the exact same conversation pieces that we had with the last one, and we just kind of like, okay, yes. And so we just keep going. We roll with the punches, whatever. And um, you know, it's last call, and so we leave. And there's like a kind of a crappy burrito place next door, but it's 3 a.m. and you've had, you've been drinking, so that's gonna be awesome. So we go, we grab our food, and we're waiting, and then some, like, van pulls up, and his girl, who originally was mine, hops in this van, and she's like, thanks, and then just drives away. I'm just like, oh, (laughs) man, what just happened? Of course, I felt bad then, because now he's like, because he he didn't even live in town, like, he was in town, and so he's like, could I have your keys (laughs) so I can sleep at your place? So it's like, okay, yeah, so I give my keys, and it's kind of like, you know, so I feel bad, but whatever. I go with her back to her place, and we walk in, and her kitchen is like a straight 50s diner, and everything's like Coca-Cola memorabilia, like everything. And it's just like, it's, okay. it's kind of weird, but, you know, like, okay. Like, um, like an original, like, Coca-Cola in this, like, old, like, jug that's got to be at like 150 years old. You're like, that's man, you're really into this. And then we sit down to eat the burritos, and then she gets into. She's like, oh, um, she starts talking about like breakfast food. She's like, you want me to make you a a, a blueberry uh, cobbler? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, okay, I could go for that. And so, not even kidding, I'm eating a burrito. She makes me like a blueberry cobbler, and then I'm so I'm like. Honestly, nothing happens. I'm just eating, like, blueberry cobbler at, like, 4 a.m. I'm like, honestly, I'm fine with this. It's okay. <laughs> totally this satisfied. is an, an okay situation. <laughs> and so, but the, she also made pancakes for some reason. I don't remember why. Um, but they were gluten-free pancakes. And I remember tasting them and be like, I actually kind of like these better <laughs> than regular pancakes. And so now, by default, I have a bag of of gluten-free pancake mix in my refrigerator at all times. So in case you never know, somebody comes over and they spend the night, they're like, oh, you know, I'm gluten-free. It's like, don't worry. I got gluten-free pancake mix. (laughs) Bam. Yes. Yes. Right. Right. So that was my blueberry cobbler whatever (laughs) story. See, sometimes it's just learning, man. It's not like a... You know, maybe it didn't 
end up the way that you wanted it to end up. Well, you learned some stuff. Yeah, yeah. I like I like the gluten pancake mix idea. Yeah. Um, should I ever find myself in a similar situation, <laughs> I think uh, I'll take that up. That's it. It hasn't come to fruition yet, but one of these days it will. I can promise oh, it's you. One, it's one of those things that you, just, you never like need that. it until you really need it, and then you have it. You're like, yes, I am. That's amazing. right. So. That's it, man. <laughs> it's like a golden gun from it Goldeneye. It is a golden gun. You, you, <laughs> you just, or, it's, or at least the uh, the uh, the Derringer, like one shot pistol. Where, like you never need it until you really need it, and then bam! I just Derringered right. this breakfast. Right, <laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> uh, but all right, that's that. I think that's all I can. I'm sure I can think of more, but maybe save that for another segment. But um, so how's your beer yeah, man yeah, going? Yeah. Good man. You know what? It's uh, I I wasn't uh that disappointed by this one. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a little apprehensive when I tried something new. Okay. And I didn't I didn't really mind this one. Nice. This ghost beer. So yeah, it's good. All right, nice. Yeah, and the, my uh, bird dog, ten year old bourbon whiskey. You know, it's pretty good. It's um, <clears throat> I feel like as the I mean, you know, maybe just my my pal is used to it now. You you, you don't get as much of that charcoaly smoke flavor in the mouth, but um, yeah, yeah, it's definitely a, a pretty decent sipping bourbon. It doesn't burn going down at all, and um, yeah, I would recommend it. But um, nice. I think it's time to get into number the second drink. But, Beer number two. Yeah, but oh, you know, so I, I'll uh, crack this open then. Uh, Get into something I was going to ask you, but so yeah, so I got this. I'm going to go with the the Bira Moretti, La Atent. Yeah, this Italian Authentica. Mix. So I'm guessing that means authentic okay. in Italian. It's not I'm curious stuff. about this Italian beer, man. Yeah, I am. I feel like it's just going to be kind of like a pissy pilsner, but a meh beer, right? Yeah, nothing out of Italy. Like I hope it's good, but I, I'm just saying, like. Italy's not your place for just a knockout kind of beer. Yeah, kind of, you know, I crack it and smell it open. It smells a lot like a Carlsberg. Uh-huh. You know, that uh, kind of uh, not quite skunky, but a little skunky Pilsner thing going on. Yep. Which yep. is almost exactly what I was expecting, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. <clears throat> but, all right, I'll give it a swig and send it over to you. Let's see. <clears throat> Honestly, taste taste wise, it's not bad. It's um okay crisper than I thought it was gonna be. Yeah, yeah. It's got a little bit of that's like, good. That's got, always kind of yeah, a good thing. It's got a little bit of like a, a lemon rind um taste to it. So there's a hint of like lemony to it on top of your kind of pilsnery thing. I'm drinking it out of the bottle, so maybe that helps prevent me from getting that um like skunky aroma. But um yeah, yep. All right, good for this Italy beer, then, I mean, man. you know, it's not what fantastic. It What's that? I mean, it's called Bira Moretti, what? but... Um, Moretti, okay. It's, um, I mean, it's not, like, the greatest beer in the world. I don't know if I'd necessarily go out and buy more of it, but it's not bad. It's... Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm decently surprised that it's not just straight All right. <laughs> there it is. I like it. Always a risk. All right, I'm going to try the... Uh, I'm, I'm going for this thing called... Skull Splitter. Nice. This has to be the flagship um, of wannabe Vikings and probably quite a few neckbearded gentlemen uh, everywhere. But <laughs> I'm going to drink it just because uh, I've never had it before. Okay. And uh, bad situations, you always kind of feel like splitting somebody's <laughs> skull, your <laughs> right, own, yeah, or yeah. somebody else's afterwards. So yeah. that's kind of where I was. my head was at when I picked it up. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. A little bit about this beer. Like I said, Orkney Brewing in Kualu. And it's got a, a burly 8.5% ABV. Right. Um, so happy with that. It definitely smells like your your typical Scottish kind of ale. Yeah. Right yeah. off the bat. So I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be something similar to this. Uh, the label says 5,000 years in the making. I'm not really sure what they're going for with that. Uh, I wouldn't want a beer that's been sitting around for 5,000 years. I'm happy just to have one that's decently brewed, but let's see how this goes. (laughs) 
Yeah, that's good. I, I paused because, like, this is another thing that I've, I've got uh, uh, kind of a, an, an issue with. It's these Scottish style ales. This is definitely one of this feels like one of those. Okay. They call it an, an authentic Orcadian ale. I don't know what that means, Orcadian, uh, but it smell. It, it has that Scottish ale. Uh, mouthfeel and general taste, a little bit of that carameliness, okay. uh, velvety kind of feel. Good beer. Like I'm not trying to knock it by any stretch of the imagination. I'd maybe dial down the branding a little bit. I'm a big right. fan of Founders uh, Dirty Bastard. That's one of my favorite beers. Okay. And this is probably comparable with that. Um, so yeah, man, it's it's good. Um, Definitely something that uh, after like a super rough day, uh, I probably only need about three or four of these things to be <laughs> feeling like everything's back to good again. It's funny. So um, I have this book. It's called Michael Jackson Great Beer Guide, and not not the he he Michael Jackson, but the uh, I mean this guy's dead now. Well, I guess they're both dead now. <laughs> right. But um, this dude was like the end all be all beer like literary writer where he i mean if he said it was good it was good like this was actually a guy you'd listen to not like a lot of the people now and um when you were talking about skull splitter i knew it was in this book of the 500 classic beers that he like recommends you drink before you die kind of okay thing. so while, yeah. while you were talking i grabbed it and so i will read you the entry grayson will read to you uh the entry nice. for yes. the uh the skull splitter okay which is a strong scottish ale slash we heavy and um, the ideal serving temperature is 55 degrees Fahrenheit, FYI. <laughs> okay. But it's been it sitting is, out uh, for a little bit. So okay, really... nice. So the uh, the little blurb says, Many skulls were said to have split by a Viking ruler of Orkney, or Orkney in the 9th century. During renovations of the island's cathedral in 1919, a split skull was found sealed into a pillar. This beer, this beer <clears throat> if taken in excess, seems to pr- promise an external sleep. The Orkney Brewery Skull Splitter is a wee heavy. It is a raisiny sweet aroma, a very creamy taste, developing flavors like a fruitcake dunked in port and a toasty finish. The brewery okay. is in a former schoolhouse in a windswept hamlet of Kulo, uh, some Scottish town or whatever I'm not saying right. On the it's largest, like Kualu thing, right? Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. On the largest of the Orkney Islands. It's beer... Beers also include the Chocolate Dark Island at a more conventional strength. So I guess there's a Chocolate Dark Island beer from the same company. But Chocolate Dark could be amazing. Yeah. But, uh, so, yeah, that is, it is one of the 500 beers you should drink before you die. And There you go. Okay. Back when I was really, when I got this book and I was really into it, and I would, like, compare the ratings to Beer Advocate ratings, back when they used, like, the, the number system instead of, like, the grades. It received yep. an, an 88 out of 100. I, I would, yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't put it far off from that, to be honest. Okay. Uh, it, it's like I said, it's it, it's an enjoyable beer. Uh, I'm not necessarily like completely blown away by it, but uh, but yeah, I, I dig it. I definitely think, uh, at least from like a history standpoint, it'd probably be. In my book, I, I like the, uh, you know, where it's brewed and everything. Um, but yeah, that's that's uh, that's awesome. There you go, accidental top five hundred beer. Yeah, there on the you podcast go. today. There you go, everyone. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know I'd had it before, but it's been such a long time that I I could not remember what it tasted like. Yeah, yeah, uh, it, it's it's very similar to that. To what you would think of if you're thinking about a Scottish ale. I'm having trouble figuring out the other Scottish ale that I really like. Besides Dirty Bastard. Maybe the Bellhaven? Maybe. Yes. I think, I think you're right. I think that is the one. I think you can even get Bellhaven in a nitro. And in, in like the 16-ounce the or the, the taller cans. I believe you can get a... You can get a regular Bellhaven. And then I think there's a nitro version. Yep. And the nitro... Nope, I that's think, what it is. Bellhaven. Okay. Is that Dude, the... I have not had a Bellhaven in ages, it's man. So... I think oh, the last man. time I had it. Yeah, I, yeah had... I think the last time I had it was you. It might have been. Yeah, I had one a couple months ago because I forgot it had the the widget in it, and I it was it's so good. There's some of these like I don't 
I don't get like okay, so you'll get a lot of like widget widgetized nitro beers from like the UK, but you don't get any of the widgets in the in the in the states. Like all the nitro beers are like they like pump the gas into the bottle and then you have to like force it out really hard. And yeah, uh, right. Oh, spe- so I was the at this, awesome. so I was at, I was like with this group of people and we're just kind of hanging around the table and people had been drinking. And I was just kind of hanging out and these other people come in. Um, I didn't, again, I didn't know anybody here. Um, this happened over the summertime and the, <laughs> this, this girl, she's like, you know, I could, I, I need a beer. And somebody's like, okay, we'll get you one. And like the only thing that they had was like a, a, a Guinness in the, you know, the, with a nitro widget, the can or whatever. And, um, she's like, I, you know, I don't know how to open the, uh, pour those properly. And okay. I had one friend and she kind of looked at me to do it. And then, but this other guy is like, I'll do it. And it's like, okay, you know, whatever. I don't know anybody. And he, so he cracks it open and he throws it into the, like, he does like the hard, <laughs> and it's like, it was almost to me as a beer person, like, like, like fingernails on a chalkboard. Like I know oh, yeah. I like right. physically winced at like the sight of this thing and <laughs> i don't think anyone else saw, but my friend definitely saw me because she knew that i'm like like just into this beer stuff and she <laughs> like i just and I, the thing is i know why he did it because there's so many other you know just bottles that you have to hard pour but the guinness like yep. that, that 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 it's like oh man <laughs> you don't have to oh man God damn it whatever whatever yeah yep, yep. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, that is it, dude. That Dollhaven. That's the other one that I was thinking of. That yeah, that is uh I feel like next time we hang out, we're just gonna have to like go to the store and get some like the classic beers we haven't had in forever. And just like yep. uh, yes. Like the Bellhaven, I, the Orville, I like a, a Chimay or something. Yes. It's just uh. Yeah, yep. There was a I know I had this somewhere, but I was keeping notes way, way, way back. Uh-huh. Like when we were hanging out on, our, on my balcony in Burnt Tree apartment. Okay. In East Lansing. And uh, I was keeping track of all the different ones we were trying. I gotta try to find that and figure it out. Cause I think Bellhaven yeah. was in there. Um, I haven't had that in, in years, but that that is spot on. The skull splitter, very similar to a Bellhaven Scottish Yale. Okay, nice. Nice. All right, let's see. Now, while we're enjoying our drinks, we're going to get into a... We kind of threw this topic in, just called, like, bad food, bad booze. This is almost going to be a little rant. Well, it's all been a rant. This has been a rant kind of type of episode. But <laughs> um, yeah. there's... Uh, and th- we brought this up for a couple of different reasons. But So I live, you know, west coasty area now. And one thing I've discovered since living here is, one, I can get... Probably the greatest Mexican food on the planet here, but I can't get a decent slice of pizza if my life depended on it. I just <laughs> I cannot figure this out at all. Like it's I mean it's like pizza. It's, I don't know how like you're screwing it up, but I think like the California influence on the entire pizza thing around here is just screwing everything up because like so I'd go to this place that is a quote unquote Chicago pizza place. And I go on like a Friday and it's like, it's like, okay, I'm just going to get a large Chicago style pizza. And it's basically going to be like my meal for the weekend, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Right, like exactly. Chicago style yeah. pizza. And so I get the big one, whatever. And I open it up and it's thin cracker crust. I just like, what? You can't have, that's not a Chicago hell? pizza. That's not even close. That's not even New York style because it, it was like, like the, uh, it's like you're taking like communion it's, it's wafers crispy, and putting right? stuff on it. Yeah. It's just like. Yeah, yeah, that's not New York at all. And they like oh, nobody does their own homemade marinara sauce, so it's all like like it's like I'm pretty sure you guys just put spaghetti sauce onto this. That's what that's <laughs> not even getting what it tastes like. like. The best pizza places around here don't even put marinara on it. Straight up, it's just cracker crust, olive oil, cheese. Not even any tomato right. sauce on it. I'm just like, I cannot figure Isn't out. Isn't it like a bruschetta? Yeah, basically, it's like a glorified bruschetta without sauce or anything. I'm just like, okay, it tastes okay, but when you want pizza, I want like legit pizza. I I cannot freaking figure out how nobody <laughs> can figure. How, how do you? How does? It's like you're all trying to reinvent the wheel. You're not gonna. You're not gonna do any better, man. You're not gonna do any better. No. It's like no. They the needed is, two dudes pizza place out there, oh, man. I know. And the thing, like, and if you like, if you listen to, I know, especially with like comedians that would start off in New York. And then up in Los Angeles, they, you know, whenever they ask, you know, what do you miss about, you know, New York? And it's always, I miss the pizza. That's like what they always, that's always mentioned. It's like, I missed, like, for some reason, they don't know what the hell they're doing with pizzas around here. And I just, I, I, 
I can't right. figure it out at all. It, it like blows my mind that it's so hard to get like I don't know. It's like the best slice of pizza I've had out here is Hungry Howie's. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. That's no good at all. No, it's nothing like, against Hungry Howie's, but I mean it, when you're saying that that's the best one you've ever had. Yeah. It's like top pizzas I've had around here, Hungry Howie's, which is a Michigan fast food I mean chain. Next is Domino's, yep. which is a Michigan pizza chain. <laughs> and then <laughs> right, right. you're just like, guys, your best pizzas out here are Michigan pizza chains. Like and then little I mean, and then uh, Papa John's or whatever. I haven't had it, but you know, you know, whatever. But just like I would take the chain pizzas over out here over every other slice I've had. And like yeah. I've had I'll talk about it to people. And they're since they're from here, they don't really get it. They don't but understand it. I try to reference. There's a since you know I mentioned uh, Ron Swanson from Parks and Rec. There's an episode where um, the Rob Lowe, you know, the super fit guy, gets into a burger making competition with Ron Swanson. Yes. And so he's yes. like, here's a turkey burger with um, all the super fancy like, like stuff on it with saffron and whatever, and they all kind of eat it. And everyone's like, oh, this is really good. And then Ron's like. He's a beef burger. There's nothing on it. You can put ketchup on it if you like. And, you know, the <laughs> Rob Lowe's like, I thought this was a competition. And everyone's like, this is so much better. It's like, well, you just you can't beat beef, man. And I try to use that as, like, a reference. I'm like, this is, like, what California West Coast pizza pizza is to other pizza. It's like you guys are trying to just, just church it up, and it's like you don't need to. You, you, you're you going off the rails. You don't need here. to. You're going off the rails. It's like just. Totally. It's like, you know. New York style, Chicago style, Detroit style, which is basically just Chicago style in a squared off, you know, pan. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I wish Chicago, I wish Detroit style pizza got a little more credit because I kind of like the squared off pan better because you get more of the yep. the, the corner edge crust going on. Um, yeah, the crispy corner edge crust. That's yeah. I'm with you on that point, man. Like, it's it's always New York, Chicago, but Detroit they're they're actually doing something pretty good. There's a little shop up here called Ali's Bodega. Okay. And it's just like a little hole in the wall, uh, beer and snack shop, and they also make pizza there. Nice. But they do it Detroit style, so it's a red sauce that they make on site uh-huh. from scratch, uh, squared off pizza, red sauce on top, uh, little tiny spicy pepperonis. Right. Decent stuff and super simple. That's what I just don't get with the people that don't understand how to do pizza the right way. It doesn't have to be this crazy mix of, of stuff. You don't have to put quinoa on a <laughs> on a on some dough and call it like a decent pizza, right? Yeah, like, just yeah. keep it simple. Although, you know, I think about it. So I, I try to, and I try to explain it in a way because since I'm in Tucson, you got so much me- uh, fantastic Mexican stuff. And I, I try to explain to them. It's like, okay, it's like... If the Mexican joints, if you went to a Mexican joint around here that used a store bought tortilla and store bought salsa, what would you think of it? And they're like, we'd never go there. It's like, exactly. That's yeah, right. That's what all your that's... pizza places are. Of course, you know, if I went to Michigan, that's probably what all the Mexican places are. You know, st- store bought tortillas and you know, store bought oh, salsa. Yeah. So, you know, you, you win some, you lose some. And I actually posted this on Facebook. It's like, what would you rather have? Amazing pizza, crappy Mexican food for the rest of your life? Or amazing Mexican food and crappy pizza for the rest of your life. It's like, oh man, this is a tough question. That, yes, because sometimes you just want a freaking good taco, like, or like a really, smashed right? burrito. That's just like, I have yet to have a burrito with or any like, like a burrito whatever with rice in it here. But you go like anywhere else, like in the Midwest, it's all like stuff with like filler rice. It's like I, you don't need rice, man. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Oh man, dude, I don't. I don't even know how to answer that question. I think the fact that you've got some legit Mexican food down there, for me, I'm trying to weigh the the the, the question here because mm-hmm. I like both of them. It's a very hard. Know, yeah, it's like how do you answer that? It's like because I I really do I like pizza enough that I think it would frustrate me if it was bad pizza right. somewhere else. I think I would take just crappy Mexican food. Over at least having some like some decent pizza somewhere, right? And I know that that's for sure the answer I would have gave before I moved here. And then w- once I'm used to like s- like epic Mexican food, it's like okay, I haven't didn't really. I guess I I didn't even realize I wasn't having like legit good Mexican food. Um, 
And now it's like so now. See, that might be it. It's like, oh man, because like there's because around here, it's like if you want a like a legit burrito, you go to one place. But if you want like a special kind of taco, you go to a different place. So if you want a special like uh, you know, anything, there's like a different restaurant that specializes in something else that you go to. It's not just like it's a Mexican. This is why this is a hard question. Yeah, because like I could eat Mexican food for the rest of my life. I really just if it was that good and then that diversified. I think I could, I would be just fine with that. So, man, I don't know. I think I would have to be in your situation too. Yeah, I've never been in a spot that just had awful pizza, though. Oh yeah, terrible pizza. I mean, they even have like better. So they have like a these Mexican hot dogs basically here, which is like you don't take a normal hot dog bun. You kind of take a a nicely baked like uh, you know like loaf of bread that looks like a shoe basically, and you cut it and you put your 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 hot dog in, and usually it's like wrapped in bacon, and you have some avocado, yeah. and there's actually some mayonnaise. And normally I'm not a big. Do they Spanish split man, but the dog in half and grill it? They might. In I, half. I can't. Usually there's so much other like crap on it. You, it's hard to see. But they're fantastic. Like I mean, you know, oh, yeah. A lot of times I'm not like I feel like a hot dog today. It's like unless I'm at a baseball game. You know, I'm not thinking of that. But even that, yeah, it's just like I don't know. Usually, like if somebody visits and they're like, "Let's get some good Mexican," it's like. Okay, um, like what kind of Mexican do you want? Like, do you want yeah, a, just like what do you want to have? You want a tamale? What are you looking do you for? Want a, like a torta, or do you want like like, like soup? Like, <laughs> we we gotta pick. You gotta specialize. There's none of these uh, special platter number nines where they just kind of like throw you everything, like you know your normal oh, Mexican dude. restaurant. <laughs> Right, right, exactly, yeah. Uh, I mean, we've got some okay Mexican restaurants up here. I, I would say okay. Uh-huh. Um, and, and Traverse City, they've got a bit of a migrant culture anyways because there's a big farming community up here, and they, they get a lot of people that, that um, will migrate up here to, to work seasonally. Right. So a lot of times people will end up staying, and, and you know, they'll, they'll start businesses or, or whatever. So there's like a couple restaurants that are like legit, home style like family recipe kind of of stuff i'd be curious to see how close they get though right, right. so like um you know just to bring like a taco of, or to you and to be like hey can you what is this like does this even pass muster with like uh what you're used to but yeah man that's it's you know why though the other thing is with with mexican food it's it's hard to have bad mexican food because it's keeps so simple yeah yeah it's california just, yeah. like like legit. the pizzas they, they throw everything into yeah i just how especially you, it boggles oh, my ahead. mind with like southern california it's like how is it so hard to find a like good pizza i mean you have no excuse like if, no, you, if you're in New York, you might have to look around, but you're gonna find some decent Mexican food. The fact that you you're like you're in Chicago or in uh, Los Angeles and you can't for the life find decent pizza, it's like, and pizzas it's just like make a legit crust and legit marinara, and you're pretty much you're set. <laughs> like you're set, man. I don't get it, dude. I yeah. don't understand it. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, do you have do you have any food rants that just like boggle your mind? Ah, oh, dude, it's for me. It's more like I just wish, in general, that there's more diversity anywhere. Right. Like I hate that I can't get a good thing of ramen anywhere in Traverse City because nobody knows how to do it right. Oh, right. You know, and so it's it, you're just like stuck with just like there the, the, uh, food culture in America is just like so like there's pockets of good things, but when you're up in a in an area like where I'm at. Uh-huh. My biggest rant is nobody wants to venture outside of the of their comfort zone. Oh yeah, it's so, so you've got Mexican food, sections, but yeah. it's just average Mexican food, right? Yeah. yeah. Or you've got like your typical bar food, but it's not like blowing anybody away. Yeah. But they're treating it like it is. That's what kills me the most too. Yeah. So we we don't have enough diversity up here, but then we treat the mediocre food. Uh, choices as if they're like the best thing on earth up here. Uh-huh. Uh, Allie's aside, Allie's is actually really good. I've had plenty, plenty of pizza to, to know that <laughs> this is actually a, a legit, you know, piece of pizza. But like, they they started a, a ramen place here, but they don't use their own noodles, man. Yeah, they don't make their own noodles in house. How yeah, do you do that? Like, How do you have a ramen site 
and not make your own noodles. That's it's noodles. That kills me. It's like it's like if you were <laughs> if you were a baker and you didn't make your own bread. It's like what uh, what? <laughs> I don't understand. What right. Guys, what are you guys doing here? So seriously, so people will like rave about it. Like when it first opened, people were like, "Yeah, finally, Traverse City. We're getting a bunch of stuff. Like now we have a cool ramen place." And granted, it's cool. The atmosphere is cool, and and they try to import some aesthetic that makes it seem like a a, a small hole in the wall ramen place. But honestly, dude, without making your own noodles, how do you call that? You know, legit ramen. It just right. drives me nuts. Yeah, no kidding. That's. <clears throat> I just, I don't know. It's like people get in their comfort zone and they don't want to go out. I know when we lived in East Lansing, like, for some reason, all you'd get was like really crappy Chinese food, a few sushi places, and then pizza. That was it. Like you, like a new restaurant would come in, it'd be one of those three options. It just like a. Yep. It's just like why is just like can't even get some Korean food. Like, give me some Korean barbecue or something. Like, come on. Ooh. Seriously. Nobody, now, man. They don't want to venture out. Of course, now you got, uh, you know, the, the quote-unquote local brew pubs popping up like a new Applebee's back in the 90s, where it's just like, it's just <laughs> like you know, the, the brew pubs exactly. are, the Applebee's, are the Applebee's knockoffs of the 90s, where it's just like, you know, it used to be super exciting when you'd see, like, a brew pub at a town. You're like, oh, man, we got to go there. But now it's just like... Most of the beers don't taste any different from anyone else. And it's just like, why am I even here? Your food is mediocre. Right. Your beer is probably kit made in the back. I just... Yep. I don't know. And then... I mean, at this point, I don't even know if they're just like... If other breweries are white labeling kegs and just letting them just pour kegs under a different name. Yeah. They... It does. There's no differentiation at all. Right. Well, I think that's what Trader Joe's does. Like Trader Joe's buys beer or buys products from other distributors and they slap their own name on it. And so it's just like, I don't know if that's what's happening. Yeah. A lot of it, because so many places you go to, it's like, there's really nothing special about this. Like it used to be. There's a, it it did. It it used to be a unique thing, like a jump starter to a little community. Uh And now they're like, they're almost like glorified convenience stores selling overpriced beer at this point. Yeah. Like there's one that just popped up near here and I've yet to go to it because one it's, it's in that side of town. That's just straight up the tourist trap area. Right. So they're only going after the people that are like the business guys that are staying there or the families that are staying at the, the, the hotels you know, if if anybody's ever been to Orlando, there's like a strip of hotels, and that's <laughs> uh-huh. all it is. It's just like straight up hotels. This is kind of like what that area is up here. Okay, there's one area that's kind of like that. Right. Um, and it's it's there. It's in a horrible location, <laughs> and they've got like a bicycle on the front. That's like an old school cruiser style bicycle, uh-huh. and they're claiming to have like small craft brew. And I mean, it's it's just like speaking to be like just the the scummiest corporate millennial type play ever. And right. I just I can't I cannot even like. I can't even bring myself to go try it anymore it's like, we're all because things, it's like we're all things hipster. So you're going to like it. Right. Yes, exactly. And so like, I just, I just know that I'd go in there. The beer would be subpar overpriced. The food items would be the same thing. You know, nothing's really like blowing me out of the water anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, not like it used to man. Like it used to be like these guys legitimately cared about the craft enough to like sink life savings into making beer right and the ones that did it like look where they're at right now you've got your your bell's brewery out of kalamazoo like i remember when you couldn't get bell's beer outside of kalamazoo right it was like a huge deal when somebody showed up with like a six year of of, uh of like some bell's beers like holy crap like you actually had to go to kalamazoo and bring it back yeah um founders is the same way although i think founders has done maybe better than most to kind of keep the the quality standards around. Right. Yeah. But, uh, you know, in shorts, uh, I'll throw shorts in there. They, I do like shorts. Uh, and a couple of the older brew pubs around here, like right brains, one of my favorite ones that th- these guys are just for so long, they didn't do it just because people were drinking craft beer. You know, that's what kills me nowadays. Right. It's like they'll start a brewery just because they think like that's the thing to do. Yeah. We could, 
it's like you gotta have a passion with that instead of just like let's make some money off of making this because you can tell you can taste it it's like this is not that good not that good it is i know man have you heard the phrase late stage capitalism i have but it's been a long <laughs> i couldn't tell you what it meant <laughs> Yeah, it's it's basically like what I'm trying to get at though is like this feels like late stage breweryism or whatever right uh-huh. now for us. Yeah, like for you and I, because like we started this whole thing where this was like a completely unknown kind of a, a situation. Uh, we had like kind of a really niche interest to kind of go after and try these different beers. We we like uh, legit, toyed around with these legit starting one. treasure yeah. hunt like trying to find new beers that you hadn't had yeah, before it right. was so hard and nowadays it's like they're they're freaking everywhere and um like here's kind of a good example like i remember being called out by uh by even like family members to be like why do you care about beer so much like isn't it's just beer right like just Bud Light, whatever. Like, why are you gonna pay uh, eight bucks for a six pack or something like that? And right now it's like twelve or fourteen. Right. But back then it wasn't, you know, that much. And now these same people are the ones that are like the beer snobs, and they're like snobbing, snubbing me when I'll show up and I'll be drinking like, um, like a standard like Labatt because I just didn't feel like caring right, that right. day and we'll just drink labat you know but so like i'll get called out for drinking labat beer and they're drinking these like micros and it's like dude five years ago this what happened like how did the shift occur i don't know yeah and it's so much so much of it is just like uh i know i rail on ipas so often and there are some fantastic ipas out there but i feel like there's a lot more really really crappy ipas and just no one wants to admit it it's like just because it's bitter, it doesn't make it good. Oh, 100%. It is not good just Seriously. because it's bitter. Like, the, the, I went to a brew pub around here, and I got, like, I sampled every single one they had. And um, all of the IPAs, you know, like, you, you'll you'll smell the beer, and a lot of times, like, a good IPA, you get almost like a, a hint of, like, a, a grapefruit or a, there's a, some citrusy, there's, like, a pine. Yeah. It's like, you, you can yep, really, yep. You, like, it smells like you're outside and it's, like, fantastic. But these, they smelled like you took a bunch of, like, marijuana, wrapped it in gym socks and left it in your locker or whatever. It's just right, like, exactly. I don't think this yeah. is the smell you're going for, guys. Like, this is, like, not good. I mean, the taste was okay, but just, like, I, you guys, one, I don't think you guys understand the, uh, the hop characteristics that you're using because there's so many hops especially uh, like West coast, uh, Pacific West coast hops that, uh, yep. I don't, just, I don't think you guys get it. You're just throwing crap together. And the thing is IPAs are so freaking easy to make because it's like, it's just bitter. It'll cover up the really crappy flavor. I mean, there's a, there's a <laughs> right. reason you don't right. get a lot of Pilsners. One, the Pilsner, the lager and everything takes longer to make than an ale. And two, it's, if it's, if you screw it up, you can taste it. It's going to taste like crap. Oh, yeah, dude. And so people don't make them. It's going to taste awful. Yeah. That's why it's all IPAs where you can cover up the bad flavor with your bitterness or your sours where you can cover up the bad flavor with your sour. And so that that's, I don't know. That's For some reason, that's like what the two most popular like things are nowadays. And just, it's it, it, it is. And it tastes different enough from the swill. Uh-huh. that these guys that are drinking it nowadays, they don't really, they think that they're doing, uh, you know, that they're in the know because it just tastes different than the swill. Their standard is, well, it's better than Budweiser, right? right. Well, okay, well, I should hope so. I should hope that it, uh, any kind of craft brew is better than Budweiser. But nowadays, like, it, there's plenty that really just aren't, honestly. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, like, the so the sour beers are just like a, sourized version of a lambic. That's what they are. And um yeah, the problem yep. is it's like you guys a lot of these lambics have been around for so long. Does like like that's why I will almost always take, you know, even though there's some great micro beers, I almost always default to some of the imported like Belgium stuff because you or even German stuff where you can like taste the history to these beers and you can tell that like mm-hmm. a lot of care went into like the last couple hundred years to make this thing amazing and to maintain it. And it's just not like like the uh, you know flavor of the month added in, and it's just like uh, I just I don't know I like being able to taste this and be like yes. 
Like I get all this, like I get all these characteristics that are amazing instead of, you know, just a sour, which is just like a warhead dropped in water. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. It, it's, it's good and bad. I think right mm-hmm. now, you know, it's, it, we've still got that treasure hunt situation Oh yeah, that's true. Um, going on. It's just, it's, it's only, it's more so that it's a pleasant surprise for me. If I go into a microbrewery and I'm just like blown away by the beer Yeah. right now, I'm going into the microbrewery and I'm already jaded because of just how, you know, everything is. So like, there's still a little of that of what, you know, got us into this in the first place. Like uh-huh. just searching out really good beers and, and trying to, you know, see what people are doing with, uh, with what they're brewing, you know, that still kind of exists, but I, I'm just, you used to be able to go into a, a new brewery and kind of expect something different. Right. Like it was like, oh, I'm going to go here and I'm going to find something that I've never had before and it's going to be awesome and I can't wait to try it. Yeah. And nowadays it's like, okay, well, let's go and try it. I'm probably just going to think it's like 18 other beers that I've already had before, mm-hmm. you know, and maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised. And, and unfortunately, most of the time I'm just not. Like I just can – you can just taste – the general boredom that a lot of these brewers have. Yeah. Um, and to call out brewers a little bit, you know, I mean, I really do believe that there's plenty of guys out there that really care about this craft, but there's also a ton of people that really don't, and they're only doing it to turn that buck. And that yeah. sucks. Yeah. And I know, I think probably a little bit of it, at least for, you know, people like us that have been, you know, they had to go on those like, extensive treasure hunts where like you might not see a new beer that you hadn't had for weeks if not months it's just like it's like when you discover like a, a low-key band that no one's ever heard of and it's like, yeah you almost yeah. take pride in knowing it's like yeah like this is like this is my thing and then after a couple years everyone's like yeah i've been around you know you're like woo, i've been here since the beginning it's like no you, none of you guys are here none of you guys and some of these like like micro or these brew pubs that you go to like everyone else is like there but they they're just like i don't know there's something that's like you're almost a little jaded because it's like this used to be yours this used to be special just for you and now it's <laughs> now it's not and i guess that's maybe yeah, that's something yep. that we just i mean we all have just have to accept um and stop being jaded about i know i <laughs> but yeah i think i just got to take it as a treasure hunt now to find the good ones so instead of not having anything that i got a treasure hunt i gotta sift through everything to find the good ones so i just gotta I know exactly. It's got to like weed through all the mediocre. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I swear, I, I swear, we like beer. We just kind of we like the quality. Oh, love over, it. Quali- but it's, quality it's, over quantity. Exactly. It's got to be a good, decent beer. Yeah. <laughs> but all right, before we okay, before we get into our last category, I, gonna, I should ask you: Do you want to do our third drink now? Or do you want to dive into the? the uh, yeah, let's do our. We can do our third. We'll we'll do our uh, our third beer. Okay, okay. Uh, I'll let you go. Do your thing. Okay, so uh, I picked up, like I mentioned earlier, the Rochester Mills Raspberry Rattler. Um, again, just kind of going for the whole like salty or one of the split skulls or a little, in this case, uh, there's lemons and raspberries. So maybe a little sour after something didn't go your way. Uh-huh. Um, and then honestly, I just kind of like beer with lemon in it. So I'm a big fan of, of that. Right. So let me see how this is. All right. Um, off the bat, though, I do got to say Rochester Mills. I'm not a huge fan of the sticker label on the can. Oh, I really don't. So... I'm not really that appreciative of it. Yeah, where they obviously had too many cans of a different one, they just slapped on a new label. Yeah, and it, this just might be a straight like, it's a plain whatever can. Oh, okay. But the sticker, man, I'm not really a fan of like the sticker. I can't remember uh, what and beer dude. I had, but like it was the sticker label, and I pulled it off, and it was just a different. Label from the company for a different <laughs> beer. They just slap a sticker. I was like, "That's come oh, on, that's guys. Fantastic. Come on, like that's you so gotta cheap." Do a little better than that. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm already apprehensive of this beer though. It's smelling like uh, a Flintstone vitamin, like right <laughs> off the bat. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Flintstone vitamin. Ah oh, man, it's okay. It's okay. 
Okay, well, it it definitely has that. Like, it it's if anybody's ever had that Flintstone vitamin, they'll know exactly what I'm talking uh-huh. about. That yeah. is definitely in the taste here. Uh, it finishes okay. There is a freshness to this thing. Uh-huh. That's the only saving grace because it's got that kind of funky. It's it's almost really just throwing me off right off the bat. Right. Um, but you can definitely tell that yeah, there is some like, you know, fresh this in here but i don't know man it, it, this is a little bit too frou-frou for for me uh right i'm i'm shaming this one a little bit but i'm gonna i'm gonna finish it okay have you noticed is it like a lot of the vitamins you get are now like the gummy vitamins where you're basically eating like adult yeah. candy it's like sometimes i was reading like the uh like the calorie intake on some of them it's like great I've had my daily intake of vitamins. And I just ate 200 <laughs> calories worth of vitamins. I'm like, really? Right. Great. After uh, a week, I'm gonna put on. A, I'm gonna put on a pound after this week just for my vitamins. Like I, hmm. I need to stop getting the the <laughs> these the covered in sugar vitamins. I feel like that's not probably what these were originally intended for. Probably not. Probably not. But they're amazing. That's when you. I mean, gummies. Oh, How can you go man, wrong? When you like. I don't even know. Like. That's when you've reached some, I don't know, where you can't even, like, just swallow a pill of vitamins. It's got to be candy. It's got to be candy. <laughs> exactly. Right. And we've just fallen. We're, like, constantly failing ourselves. Uh-huh. Oh, man. The gummy vitamin is definitely one of those instances. Oh, man. Uh, man. Yeah, I'm peeling this sticker off, and it's just a blank can. But that's just a, that's a joke. Flintstones in a can right there. Rochester Mills would be better in a gummy form, honestly. I tell you what, man. So I opened this this Ardberg and just smelling the top of the bottle. Oh, man. This is, like, <laughs> amazing. Ooh, good. Nice. It's like this, um, I don't even know. Like, a, a, there's certain kinds of wood where, it, like, they've been so they've soaked and you just get this certain aroma. It's it's like almost like, like uh, if you're at the beach, like the ocean, and there's like beech wood, and it has that like certain aroma to it. Where yeah, you get like the saltiness of the ocean, and this like this woodiness. That's like what it smells like. I'm off just the, the top. So let's pour this. I am not pouring this over ice or adding water. <laughs> so let's see. It smells good, and it doesn't. You don't even get much of that um, like burn in the nose when you like put your nose in the glass. Let's see. It's also a good sign. Oh yeah, that is that's good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's, um, I don't even know what to say. Um, I mean, to be fair, this bottle is I don't know, what was this bottle like fifty bucks between fifty and sixty. So it's not like you're you're cheap. Scotch, but then it's also, I guess, when you're looking at scotch, it's not like the ballsiest expensive kind either, because you can get real expensive with that stuff. Um, I feel like it's almost like some natural, slight elements of vanilla in that wood woodiness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get a little, a little of the charcoaly, you know, taste in your mouth, but very subtle, and it doesn't burn at all. It's just got a nice, like, slippery, s- silky smooth down your throat, like no burn at all. I don't know. Nice. So, in case you had still been listening, yes, I'm just gonna say yes. The Ardberg is, uh, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's, uh, yeah. I will recommend getting the Ardberg. And this is like the lowest level Ardberg. A-R-D-B-E-G. Ardbeg, maybe. Ardbeg. I don't know. I dig it. I'll pull it for it, man. Yeah, definitely check it out. It's uh, well worth it. Um, But all right, so our last category that we wanted to get into, our little bit of pop culture was, so after a long, shitty, or crappy um, day of work, or bad dates, or you had really bad food and bad booze, and just the day is just not going well, it's like the theme song to Cheers, have you ever heard that? If listen to the full Cheers theme song, it's actually kind of like, your wife turned turned out to be a man, and somebody was cheating on you, and it's just like all all sorts of craziness. You drink... And you play some video games. And so we wanted to get into our personal 
top five video games that we ourselves just had enjoyed playing at some point in our lives. Maybe we still play them. Maybe they were, you know, our childhood. Just, um, yeah. So that's what we're getting into. Because I don't think we've talked very much about video games in our previous season. So maybe it's we'll been be- comics and movies. We haven't really gone into the video games that much. I don't yeah, think. Yeah. Yeah. So we wanted to bring it a little bit up in that. And I gotta be honest, it was kind of difficult just to find five. Like I find, like I kept my list kept on going and I'd be like, well, that was good, but is it better than that? This was much more tricky than I thought it would be. This was like, a, there's so many of them out there that I was like, man, what would I just like throw in? After after just like a crappy day or whatever, and then right. also kind of keep in the spirit of like the top five, and I'm like, uh-huh. Dude, I don't. This was like tricky for me to kind of come up with. Yeah. So I have a few honorable mentions that I like but didn't quite get in. Do you have any of those? Uh, I or, let me. Or were you I, more? I, uh, I'm sure. I do. <laughs> you I'm were sure actually I do. able to like stick to the format. And be like, nope, just top five. I was like, uh, I'm gonna at least mention these. I've got I've got plenty of other ones that I can kind of throw out there. Okay. Um, but let me uh, I'll I'll bounce off of your honorable mentions. I think. Okay, I'll start with my honorable mentions, and I'll start from the earliest ones that I played years ago. Um, one of the very first video games I remember playing was the uh, the Ninja Turtles video game for regular like Nintendo. Yeah, the old school arcade. NES one. Yeah, yeah. I, classic game i i like i wouldn't mind if i found the arcade version like picking that up like that was that's one of those great just like four person the, the some of the classic four person arcade games are just fantastic like that oh yeah or dude the x-men arcade game or even the simpsons arcade game those are all just yep. classic stuff so i had the, the night one man did you ever play the uh like the fantasy one where one guy was like a a knight another one was like a wizard mm, i don't think so like I didn't actually. Was that like own the roller? I actually had plays. to go to somebody's house to play this, so I was very limited. Yeah. With, um, yeah, yeah. My parents wouldn't buy me the Nintendo or Super Nintendo for some reason. <laughs> but how uh, dare they? Look at like and, and look how you turned out. Yeah, yeah. Everything would have been so much different. <laughs> so there's that, and one game, another I will mention that I did we did own was the Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade adventure game, which was on the uh, the. A series of three floppy disks that you had to keep on like oh yeah dude into your computer and it was just i mean it kind of followed along with the lines of the movie and you had like it came with like this code book to play the game and some of this some of the stuff would use like that that old school with like 3d technology where it was like red printed on blue and you had like this little red uh like uh film card that you'd put over to try to get the clues out of your book to play the game and it was just like that's just what I played, like, on the computer. It was, it was awesome. And if there's a website called goodoldgames.com or just GOG.com, and you could download this, like, for your new computer. So I've actually downloaded it. Um, actually, no, that not that one. I downloaded Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis, which was the same style. That's um, it. Adventure Dude, game. Dude, the Fate of Atlantis? Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. The, yeah. Such a good game. So, yeah, and, like... GOG.com, man, there's, like, all your old classic, like, Sam and Max, all those um, Day of the Tentacle kind of games if you that you might have played in, like, the early to mid-90s. They're all on there. So that is on my honorable mention. I have actually two more honorable mentions I'll toss out to you. Um, I There is the Battlefront, the, Star, the old Star Wars Battlefront games. I yep. really dug those. I haven't played the new one because I didn't have the like actual campaign for yourself, and I don't have enough time to get super good at video games to play against people online because it's just like if you don't have time, you're just gonna get. <laughs> it's, uh, po- it's, it's just, almost pointless. They're just gonna. Destroy yeah. You. Is that? Yeah. And then the last one is the uh, another Star Wars game, the Knights of the Old Republic. I was really, I really loved those. The, 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 it just came at a time that it wasn't as influential in my life. I love playing it, but just the reason that one was, that one would probably be number six on my list um, of games. But I think you guys are gonna find out there's a lot of Lucas Arts games on here because I just I remember when I was younger getting like a Lucas Arts demo disc in the mail, 
And so you play like, yes. a lev- uh, like a level of all these games. I think I ended up buying like five of eight of them. Like I just love these things. So they got my money. The old school demo disc is like, it's such a lost thing. People just don't know how cool these things that were. Was, and they, they were like legit demos. They are really good, good things. Like, Oh yeah. I mean, you had like a, a full levels in some cases that you could play through. Yeah. Yeah. I actually have uh, some of my actually a good good chunk of the the games I'll be mentioning <laughs> later came from that demo disc. Um, without, yeah, whatever. But <laughs> I'll let okay. I'll let you do your if you have any honorable mentions or just get into your top five or your number five. Yeah, yeah. The only so I'll I'll jump into my number five, but I'll I'll dovetail it with. An honorable mention pretty much all my number fives would probably be it might have been easier to probably do this by developer because lucas arts uh, was yes just fantastic uh-huh. um but my my honorable mentions i would put uh indiana jones and the fate of atlantis in there okay uh that game was just amazing i totally forgot about it until you had just said that uh-huh. but if nobody has played this game like it is just like classic indiana jones in a freaking game an old school game too, uh, and I mean, like, I just remember fist fighting on like a train with <laughs> yep. this guy uh-huh. in one in one spot, and uh, solving the puzzles was really sweet. So that one was definitely in there. Um, I would put Dark Forces probably as my honorable mention. Okay, uh, I love this game. This first person uh, Star Wars shooter uh, game, definitely one of my favorites. Um, I, I was never able to play like Doom or Duke Nukem or Quake. Like my parents were like super weirded out by like fighting demons and stuff like that. Like <laughs> uh-huh. don't judge them, but they they just kind of were. <laughs> but I got around it by saying like, oh look at this this cool like Star Wars game. That's kind of like right. pretty much a first person you know shooter. And um and growing up, that game was uh, was just kind of amazing. I spent hours on this thing. Um, but what I added as my number five was uh, the Shadow of the Empire from the old oh, Nintendo I totally 64. I forgot about that. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that one that one bumped out my uh, my Dark Forces uh, era just because I remember when that game came out and it started off with the the Hoth speeder yeah, yeah. battle. I was just like blown away by this. Like growing up, I would, I, I was like, I always loved that scene, and actually being able to kind of do that uh-huh. in some kind of like three D, you know, game environment was kind of like unbelievable. And and I mean, I'm sure it had its plenty of you know faults or whatever, but uh, but it was a pretty sweet game in general. You had kind of like a third person feel with uh, I think it was was it Dak Rengar was that yeah. his name. I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, 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 I think so. I think yeah, and so, like, he had some pretty cool missions, um, but ultimately, like, flying that that first Hoth, you know, speeder battle was, was just, like, incredible. Yeah. And so I think even, like, today, after, like, a super crappy day or something like that, I could just throw that on. I, I can't really work that Nintendo controller that well anymore. Uh-huh. But you could just lose yourself in that whole, like, battle scene and just, like, kill some Imperials and yeah. drop some AT-AT walkers. So that one, that was my uh, top five. Nice. My uh, my number five was uh, another LucasArts game. It was a, a spaghetti western style first person shooter called Outlaws. And this was one level again on this demo disc. And it was just, I think it was, I just liked it because it was different. It was in the Wild West. And it had that very um, fistful of dollars um, kind of feel to it. it like, nice. like, like the score yeah, yeah. was fantastic. It sounded like it could have been in a Clint Eastwood movie. And they had like these fan, fantastically animated uh, cutscenes. And I mean, it was kind of along the same lines of like uh, a Doom with like you get you got the characters that you're shooting that kind of just like walk back and forth and they turn and shoot at you and you know they, they don't have any AI or anything. But um, it was just, I just loved the Western weapons that you got and, like, going through, like, spaghetti Western towns and hunting down bad guys. And it was very, like, you know, you got to save your daughter because some bad guy killed your wife and took your daughter hostage and you're, like, the washed-up sheriff. You know, very Western-y story. And it was just, I just really 
really enjoyed it. And you ha- you hit all the western um, locations. Like you went through like a, a like a mine where you, you're going through like the little like rail cars trying to you know looking for people. And you always had like the super bad guy that you know the boss that you had to fight. And I just I don't know. I really really dug it, and it was just it was just so much different from most of the games I played and there's really not a whole lot of great like western shooter and shooter games for whatever reason you know you got like the uh, red there's dead there's not no you got red dead which isn't nece- really a first person shooter it's more of like a you know, yeah like the, your grand theft auto kind of thing and then which i think we yeah, talked about yep. you know off pod off recording and then you have that the a couple of Juarez games which is actually not not bad if you want like a western shooter but there's really not much in that genre for whatever reason. No, not not at all. No, I've actually never played that one from LucasArts, so I'd be curious to check that one out too. That one, actually, I think I checked is also on uh, the, that GOG.com website, but it's only for PC. So there's actually yep. a lot of games that are just for PC, and I'm thinking about just getting a really crappy like laptop so I can play some of these games. Because, I mean, these, these video games were made in like the early 90s. It's not like you need a powerful computer to play them. So, no, <laughs> yeah, no, definitely not. So... That's my number five, but uh, what, what about your number four? Okay, so number four. Um, sticking with the, the Nintendo 64, I think it's one of those platforms that kind of had not a lot of... Uh, people kind of only played a few games on this thing. Um, but my number four is Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey. And I used to play this game with uh, a bunch of buddies in high school. We would also play Bond. Bond almost made it onto this list oh, as well. Yeah. Uh, the old GoldenEye 007 game. But, like, uh, three, Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey did a lot of things right. For one, they kind of, like, had this arcade style to hockey, uh-huh. which is already, like, kind of a slow game anyways. Right. It was three-on-three three hockey with some of, like, the, the, the big stars of the time. Um, old school, you know, stars like you had Iserman and and uh, a couple others from uh, the Red Wings. But like for instance, like the the Pittsburgh team had Lemieux and Yager, and uh, it was just like a, a ton of fun, all kind of cartoony type stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, huge hits, lots of shots. The games were like fourteen to twelve, you know, goal wise. Super easy to to kind of learn the mechanics of. Right, and uh, that's just another one of those games where, like, I could just kind of sit there and, and zone out and and, and just kind of like play some hockey with some buddies without having it be too detailed. Uh, nothing against like the the modern day sports games, but like you don't see a lot of these like just straight for fun games. Like that's really all Gretzky's hockey was like made for. Right, it wasn't like a you weren't gonna go through a season. It wasn't a simulation. It was literally just like. You know, bash them, you know, out five minute periods, big fights, and, and totally clowning the entire kind of hockey game. Kind of like those old, uh, like, and, NFL and kinda, Blitz games where, like, yep, <laughs> you know, yep. like fire and lightning, and you like, it's just like crazy hits. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And, and I kind of miss that. Like, I feel like there's not really, you know, a lot of sports games like that. I think Rocket really? League, maybe was similar, but I never played it. just kind of looked similar to that kind of feel. Uh-huh. Um, but most of the times, man, like, you know, the, the games that I hear about are like FIFA uh, and Madden, of course, but mm. uh, they're, they're so complicated, dude. Like, new players can't jump into those and just play them. Right, yeah. And, and this was one where, like, you could just literally give the guy a controller and he'd figure out in, like, two minutes. Uh-huh. Nice. Yeah, I, I never got super into like the sports games. I guess um, they they weren't included on the LucasArts demo discs, <laughs> so maybe that's why. Right. right. Yeah. Um, because that, I know my number four was also something. Man, I was really influential on when I was that age. Um, my number four was uh, the Curse of Monkey Island. I don't know if you ever played any of the Monkey Island. Oh games. yeah. Um, yes. Curse Classic of, game. The Curse of Monkey Island was the third one. Uh, it was a, I thought, a fabulously animated. It was much more kind of like a cartoony one because the, the the first two were much more like early '90s kind of hard graphic, um, almost overly drawn stuff. But the, uh, I mean, this is the same along the same lines of the Indiana Jones games, where it's like a point and click adventure game where you pick up things and you like combine stuff in your inventory to solve 
uh, problems, whatever. Of course, the thing is, since this was before the internet, you couldn't really look up solutions. So if you were stuck, this right. would take weeks before you figured out how to like to fix it or to get past it. And I'm just like, I kind of miss it. But if this was like, if that happened nowadays, like I'd totally just look online, like how to do this, or whatever. But like, th- I think that's what made some of these games so great is that you could be stuck for forever, and like, like. Just, and then when you get it, it's such like a, yeah. like it's so rewarding when you get it. Like you want to like woo! Like I finally got it. Right. Like I, right. Like I like the, the like that was stupid. I combined the bubble gum with the hair and whatever. It's just like <laughs> right. But just like I I I love the the Monkey Island games. Um, I thought you know, the third one was my favorite. You know, there's a fourth one that was more like 3D computerized. I just like the. You know, the humor was great. Animation was fantastic. I loved the music. It was just one of those things that you could... I mean, it wasn't like a sit-down. You just kind of mindlessly go through because you got to pay attention. But I just... Oh, yeah, yeah but just, you still, like, those games, exactly like you said, man, you got stuck and you had to just, like, try everything. Yeah, yeah. And it's just... I was just like, yeah, and it's like... I don't know. There's not a whole lot of games like that anymore. You don't have any of those, like, adventure point-and-click games where it's like you would lose your mind trying to get past the, the smallest thing. It's like they don't have any of those anymore, really. I think maybe people just, that their uh, their attention span wouldn't <laughs> allow for it nowadays. But I don't know. I I, I think that's true, man. Like, and, and it'll get spoiled, too. Like, people won't even have the patience to try to figure that stuff out anymore. Oh, yeah, just look it online and be like, bloop. So, yeah, that is my Curse of Monkey Island. I'm, I could go with the entire uh, collection, but I'm going to do it just, just the, the third one. I think that one, for me, far and away, is beyond any of the others. Nice. Number three, I never really played the Curse of the Monkey Island games, but I did enjoy a lot of those point-and-click ones. Uh-huh. Um, like uh, Sam and Max and... Um, yeah. Uh, Lucas Arts was like man, was that key with the the point and click things back in the nineties. They, they were, they, they were, and they were all good games. Yeah, yeah, they were. Yeah, they did. But, um, yeah, I'll throw number. Three all right, my my number three. Number three I had was, uh, and we're sticking with like a lot of PC games too, which is, I think is kind of awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I had Warcraft two as my number three. Nice. Um, and this was another one of those games where, like, I I liked the notion of strategizing and defending these like commune t- or castle type things with either the, you know, depending on, like who you were. Um, I remember there's like one mission where you could just like hack your way like through the forest uh-huh. to like get to like the very end is kind of like a cheat or, or whatever. This was, like, before anybody was, like, playing, you know, online together. Um, You know, it wasn't, like, an online experience. It was all just kind of, like, you just kind of, like, doing it. Um, But I always liked that whole, like, um, uh, knights and orcs and stuff like that. Uh, And this one had boats in it, which was awesome. Okay. Um, and, and again, just like that strategy type game. So I would, uh, I, I spent a ton of time with Warcraft two and, and that's, uh, you know, one of those like games where I, I could still probably go back to and just have a lot of fun. Just, just playing through the campaign mode. Oh, for sure. I mean, I didn't even think, yeah, I, I missed some of those games where, yeah, you just building armies and going on conquests, that kind of stuff. Yep. Cause I know people that still play those like uh, Sid Meier's Civilization games. I, you know, some of those can be fun, but uh, mm-hmm. that's uh, my number three. I, I was my top three. I was like kind of juggling around, um, but I'm gonna go. Out, I'm gonna go with Fallout Three for my number three. Uh, I'm a bit. I'm a big Fallout fan. I enjoy those games. I, you know, I liked Fallout Three. I like New Vegas because it's so much different from Fallout Three. And I enjoy the fall the current Fallout game. Um, that's like the only game I really play right now <laughs> on my my yeah. PlayStation. Um, yep. It was just when I first played it, I was just like, "This is so odd." Like I love the story. I liked Fallout Three because one, the power armor wasn't so easy to get. Like with Fallout Four, there's power armor like every five feet, so it's not like it's that tricky to get some of that stuff. 
Um, but I guess there's a couple of, yeah issues I had at Fallout Three. I hate that your your weapons would just break. <laughs> be like you'd be in the middle of combat and your <laughs> yes, shotgun's like yes. you don't have a gun in your hands anymore and you got ghouls everywhere. It's like ah oh, crap. And so like, what the hell happened? Yeah, yeah. And, and I hated that you like you were maxed out on your your uh, character upgrades. Like after twenty levels, like you couldn't upgrade anymore. It's like well, I'm done with this game. <laughs> I might as well just finish it now. Now that I can't like, <laughs> right. keep up, updating or whatever because I know what the new one is. You just keep going. And so like, that's kind of why I'm still playing. It's like, okay, I want to get like 100% upgrades, like for everything, which I'm pretty yep. sure can't happen. Um, but <laughs> I will get to it. <laughs> that's right. Yes. But uh, yeah. Okay. What What's your uh, number deuce? Yeah. So that so for me, I actually had Fallout, um, and I just wrote Fallout right. for my number two uh and that's because i never played the first two i didn't play fallout or fallout two uh-huh. um those were a little bit too uh before me like i wasn't that heavy of a gamer when those right. came out uh but fallout 3 was like absolutely incredible and i liked new vegas and i'm definitely digging uh fallout 4 uh in similar you know sense like i, I get it like the main quest isn't that um time intensive but there's so much other stuff happening right that i kind of like um the world in general yeah with fallout 4 my only issue I but guess, i do i'm oh, sorry go ahead I was gonna no, say no, my, no. one of my things that ca- my i guess biggest complaint with fallout 4 is the the location the locale is too i feel like it's too similar to fallout 3 it's very you know it's East very Coast, similar you know it's boston versus dc and yep. it's like I wish they would have gone someplace just different, you know, like Me totally, too, you know, a different kind of like visual experience. And like I liked they, there's a uh, a Far Harbor expansion pack where you go to like a New England islandy kind of area, and it's like super foggy and like like I liked that because it was a different visual experience. But for the most part, it's just like I was like, man, I really wish you guys would have gone to like, you know, there are rumors that it was going to be in San Francisco or New Orleans or stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, I kind of yep. wish it would have been a little bit like that. Uh, you know, just something. I guess you know maybe San Fran, you'd be a little limited with you know what you could do outside. Oh yeah, Golden Gate Bridge and yeah. <laughs> um, Dude, I hear. Yeah, I'm with you on that front as well. Um, it looked very much just like a, a essentially the sequel to Fallout Three. Yeah, yeah. Um, and not even maybe the sequel, but just like the the spiritual successor in terms of computing power and uh, you know gameplay upgrades. But like as far as like an immersive experience, mm-hmm. um, that's why I'm like I'm trying to figure out which one I like the most, and I think it is Fallout Three. Yeah. Um, out of all of them, I love New Vegas. I thought it was great, but uh, I did get a little bit bored with with some of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, there there was a lot of just like desert nothingness kind of in yeah. New Vegas, uh, and the factions and everything like that was kind of fun to play around with. Similarly, with Fallout Four, like I, I haven't gotten that far into like the community building aspect of it. Right. Um, but I, I don't mind it. You know, I kind of dig it, but as far as just like a straight up, this was kind of a, a, a mind opening kind of experience. Like fallout three was definitely up there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like with fallout four, at some point you get so advanced with your character upgrades where it's just like combat's almost pointless. You just kind of like, you just waste everyone. <laughs> it's like they they can't even touch you. Right. Like even if right. You're, unless you're playing on the uh, survivor mode, which like you know, you know, good on you if you can do that. I just, like, yeah, right. Exactly. I, I just can't do that, but um, and uh, yeah, outside of that, it's just like eventually you get so upgraded where it's like you're not going to die. You have so much health. You have so many like incredible weapons that I don't know, but. Yeah. So yeah, that was uh, that ended up being my number two. We'll just okay. fall out. My my number two was uh, it's a game that I I sent over to you like you gotta check this out. It was called Grim Fandango, and I just yes, that's abs- the one I was trying to figure out. Yeah, that is absolutely loved everything about this. Like I really contemplated putting this as number one. Um, I feel like in terms of story wise, it's maybe the best storied 
video game I've ever played. I think the voice acting might be the best voice stuff I've ever played. I think the music's the best v- music ever played. It's just so unique. You know, you, you're kind of... It, it's, 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 a very, it's like a small cult following for this, but it's not a very popular game. Uh, again, another LucasArts game. But it's done in a uh, Day of the Dead kind of thing, which is, uh, you know, fairly ironic because I think that's either uh, today or tomorrow, the official... Um, Day of the Dead um, stuff. Yeah, it's it's this month at least. For yeah, sure. I think it's it might be tomorrow because I know there's a the Tucson procession, the Day of the Dead procession, um, is tomorrow. Nice, there you uh, go. It, yeah, it's a whole weekend thing where I know I, I think tomorrow is where you um, it's kind of like a big yeah, like you you is where you dress up with your uh, you know your your makeup whatever, and you have like your visual or your representations of the the people that have passed on. And there's like a like a not not a bonfire, but like something that you like you you throw the your the, the stuff in into where it's like a it's almost like a celebration of and you kind of like I don't know it was a big thing, but like the the art style was Day of the Dead, and the whole story was you're this character that um, <laughs> essentially you're a Grim Reaper slash travel agent for people that have died, and it's your you are. Um, you you sell them this stuff to uh, for their like seven year journey through the land of the dead till they find their like final like resting place. But then you realize yep. that the people running this thing are like the the uh, the land of the dead are corrupt, and they're taking all these special things that are supposed to go to like these saints and the people that live great lives and selling them to like the like the shady underbelly people, and and so it's like this very interesting story where you're worming your way through and it's again it's another point and click uh, adventure game there's a very it's there's very casablanca y elements to it and it's just everything about it is super unique and so amazing and actually again on game uh, good old games they they released and updated they they redid the gra- i mean they didn't completely redo the graphics but they uh freshened it up so that it looks better on modern technology yeah, yep. so you can download it on the computer, and it's just like I downloaded it, and it's fantastic. Like I, it's like one of those games. Like I have to get this. Like this is like, it's not like you know you have to think about what you're doing, but it's, it's such a fantastic, just immersive environment that I absolutely love. That I know they're never gonna do a sequel to. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> right. my childhood. Right. I just like I tried to explain it to people, and it's just like it's. A very fantastic game, and I'm actually Pixar's. Pixar is doing a Day of the Dead movie that's coming out later this month. Um, they are, yeah. And so I'm interested to see uh, that. I don't yep, know what it's yep. called, but um, they got that dog. In it. I can't remember what that's called either. Oh, the, the yeah, the, the Chihuahua dog. That's. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. My uh, daughter wants to go see that, but yeah, Grim Fandango is. Uh, it's such a good game such a great game yeah and it's it's long like nowadays i feel like you don't the storyline at least is not like extensive it's not like in depth to the point where like man this could be like like a jit movie like this is amazing it's usually very basic a to b to c and that's it this is very you know i don't know it's i mean <laughs> it took me a very long time to beat this game like it was when i first had it it was just like again like it, yeah man like a like the curse of monkey it's Island another one of those games that, it's very yep you know yeah you had to like sit with it and you, you couldn't just go to like a walkthrough really or or if you did you almost felt like you're cheating yourself out of like the actual experience at yeah, the end of the day that satisfied like yes i man yes that's awesome okay next part so yeah that is my number 2 and i'll i'll uh, i'll let you do your uh, number 1 Favorite game of all time. Okay, number one favorite game of all time. Uh, again, this is going to be uh, Nerd Alert on my end. Um, I'm a big strategy game guy, and it's the game that I basically can turn to over and over again. This game originally came out in like the late 90s on the PlayStation. Uh-huh. It was from uh, Square, and it was Final Fantasy Tactics. Okay. So it was the... the turn-based strategy game from Square, set in a Final Fantasy uh, world, but you basically just had a, a small group of, of kid heroes that kind of fought against this like huge evil, 
and you had to do it with um uh you could only do certain things with each character like they could move and then attack and you had different job classes uh, it was very hands on with the way that you wanted to structure your team you could have all knights or or mages and knights and archers and they had like 12 different job classes mm. tons of customization you could really sort of like play it the way that you wanted to play it um the ai was actually really good uh and and for whatever reason like the story was kind of wonky admittedly um like i said like you, you're kind of like these kids that stumble upon this greater like evil um and you do your best to sort of like it's like any final fantasy game right the same kind of thing happens <laughs> right. um but like for the most part it, for me it was the gameplay uh, and the fact that I, I would try to beat it in a number of different ways, like how fast can I beat it, you know, different speed runs, can I beat it with like just different, uh, only using these kinds of job classes. So, um, you know, when I think about like my, the, the, the classic video game that I would turn to for just like wanting to zone out and, and close off everything, um, I think about tactics for me, for, for sure. Nice, nice. My number one was, uh, again, on the demo list <laughs> disc. Um, naturally, actually, nice. now that I'm looking at it, I think all but uh, Fallout was on that demo disc. <laughs> so that good on you, <laughs> Lucas right. Arts. You really influenced me with that demo disc you sent out. Um, That's right, man. But it was, I actually played this one first. It was uh, Dark Forces 2 Jedi Knight. And um, oh man, I never played that one. This was the very first game I ever played where your actions in the game dictated on like the end of the game. Like it blew my mind. Where um, because it's essentially a first-person shooter where you start off, um, you know, like like with your guns, whatever, and then you you learn force powers, and then as you go, you kind of level up certain force powers. But if you like kill. Like, with your lightsabers, civilians or droids, you end up as a dark Jedi and um, versus a light Jedi. And it had actually um, real cinematic cutscenes with people and, uh, like, special effects. And, you know, you had the John Williams nice. score. And so the fact that it could, like, it completely changed your ending. And so you had to play it a couple, like, once to be, like, just don't... St- slice the civilians running around and of course at that time you didn't most video games didn't have like just random people running around like that was just too much extra you know like processing power to have things that weren't important to the game and apparently they were because it dictated you know you had your your gonk droids that you slash with your lightsaber and you kill oh you shouldn't have done that but um it was just like right right. uh, i mean yeah so you go through it and you fight seven different jedis or, or uh, Sith, whatever, and um, you're basically going to revenge your father, which isn't very uh, Jedi-ish of you, but um, it was just like, I don't know, I mean, because at that age, I was all things Star Wars, and it was a first-person shooter, and I got to use some really cool um, powers, or whatever, of course the dark powers are always better, because you get to shoot lightning, um, but I just absolutely loved that game it was just like i'd play it so much and the computer i was on for some like my sound card would have issues so the special of the sound effects would go out so just be the music so if i'm getting like blasted in the back i don't know (laughs) i'm just like (laughs) why is my health going down what's happening right now so like i loved that one it ends eventually they released an expansion pack called uh jedi knight mystery of the sith it wasn't like you could tell it was rushed a little bit. It didn't have the uh, the live action cutscenes. They they were very squared off. The gra- I mean, the gameplay was very similar. But uh, the reason I like that one was so they brought. I think Mara Jade was in that. You know, for anybody that's a big Star Wars oh, yeah. EU fan, you know yep. Mara Jade with your purple lightsaber and everything. Um, but the the cool thing about that is you actually go to a like a Sith temple, and so everything if you're like that, like you have like these Sith statues that would come to life and battle you, and every they just you didn't know which ones would come to life, and it was very cool experience. Uh, the ending was very anticlimactic, but just that experience of going to the temple was cool. 
I kind of grouped Dark Forces into this because I played Dark Forces after Dark Forces 2. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, yeah. Um and so it was, it was a little different, but I mean Dark Forces was super cool. You didn't have I mean it was the same character, the same main character. It just um so like stealing the Death Star plans was was always cool and like yep. that. And then then I liked um when they released it's funny. So you had Dark Forces. The next game was Dark Forces Two: Jedi Knight, and the game after that was called Jedi Knight Two. So figured that one out. I guess that would be a kid. Dark Forces Three. I I don't know, but um, that one again was like for like a better computer system, and you know this guy had like put away his lightsaber, so it, it was kind of uh, similar to the Jedi Knight, where you start off with your guns and everything, and then you eventually take on your Force power and. Whatever, and you actually had Billy D. Williams in there playing Lando, like the the actual voice. So, <laughs> yes, uh, nice. Actually, speaking of the devil, the guy's in town for a comic con. I was actually oh, was awesome. like, maybe, but that was like it was like seventy bucks for an autograph. I was like, I don't really feel like dropping. I hate bucks. that, man. Yeah, it's like, come on, do you really need the seventy bucks? It's just like, Give me man, an yeah, I'm already paying to get in. It's like, can I? Seventy bucks is a lot to just a lot, to, man. To go, and especially, I mean, Billy D. is cool. That's a lot of money to pay for a guy that's been in like two movies. Like, <laughs> okay, he was in like a Brian song and uh, Star Wars and, and some <laughs> Cult 45 commercials. I should have brought in like a, an empty Cult 45, had him sign that. <laughs> that would have been amazing. <laughs> that would have been fantastic. Yes. <laughs> Uh, but that's, I guess, yeah, my number one, I guess, is like the combination of just Dark Forces, Jedi Knight, and I'm throwing Dark oh, Forces dude, in yeah. there, but that was probably... If nobody's played those games, they have to. I've always wanted to play that second one. I never have. It was, oh, it, was, um, just, it, was, it was real good. I mean, it was a great first-person shooter for the time. You can switch to third-person mode if that's, you know, you're more of a the third-person kind of angle, but, I mean, it was great. You know, you had different, you fought so many different, like, Sith um, you know, evil Jedi's, and each of yep. each of them had different kind of tactics, so you had to kind of adapt and whatever. And the fact that I could like change my outcome based on that, like, blew my mind at the time. I was like, "There's different endings." Like, yes, I couldn't even right. fathom that. I was like, "What?" That's awesome. Very cool. Yeah. Right. Um, it's also on good old games too. So I gotta, I gotta check this site out. This is awesome that you can find all this stuff oh, on the site. So many, like if you are a fan of like any classic games, if you like the old LucasArts game, there's a whole bunch. There's, it's yeah, definitely a just a fantastic website, and they're not, a, they're not that expensive either. Like you might max out a game purchase at like no, a lot of them are t- under ten bucks. Maybe the 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 newer, more elaborate games are maybe twenty, maybe, but most of them are going to be like under. 10 yeah, right, games, right, right. Like ten. Yeah, no, it's like a legit way to play these old games. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Very cool. So yeah, I guess <laughs> that is our top fives of everything. Um, so your uh, your 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 brews. What would be your uh, your number one, I just had a crappy day of whatever. What, what's your go-to? Oh, yeah. Pick of the week for the, for this one is uh-huh. definitely the Skull Splitter. Nice. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of those kind of Scottish ales anyways. Uh-huh. Not that this uh, the, the Ghost Beer was that bad. Uh, I really wasn't impressed by this Raspberry Rattler. Um, just the one where it's like I just need to melt my head in something for a while. <laughs> right. This is uh, The Skull Splitter is definitely going to be the one. Uh-huh. Yeah, for me, I, I, I don't know, not not a big uh, shocker. I'm going with the Ardbug. It's just smooth. It's if you're a Scotch whiskey, bourbon, whatever fan, this is one that's like is you can just like melt in your chair. If you want to watch TV and just mellow, that's fine. If you want to work on something without just you know like taking shots of stuff which always, which always kills me with the jameson like jameson's not bad but like if you ask if you were to go to a bar and ask for it they're going to give it to you in a shot glass right right of course that kills me in gen- okay and i'm going to go on a random tangent but like if i go to a bar and i and there's obviously like a high like you're, you're pulling off scotch from the back I've, obviously that scotch is not going to be uber cheap you're probably probably paying at least 10 15 bucks for that pour of scotch don't pour in a freaking shot glass, man. Don't no, do it. No, no, no. That yeah, kills me. Don't do it. It's like, you know, I'll tell them, okay, like that scotch neat. Like, okay, 
They pour in a shot glass. Like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> it's I, didn't, like it's, I, didn't, I don't want to shoot I her. I didn't ask for a shot of that scotch. I asked for the scotch neat, which means pour in a freaking uh, rocks glass so it can open up and breathe, which is not going to happen when it's in like this little quarter size, you know, glass. <laughs> right. That's not going to happen. Right. Like it, it dry, I, I don't get it. It's like, this shouldn't be complicated, guy. Like, if I asked for it on the rocks, what would you pour it in? Yeah? Then just don't put the ice in it and pour it in the same big glass. Exactly. Like, right. Like, have you ever seen, like, a James Bond movie or some kind of movie like that where they ask for it neat and they give them a shot? No, that never happens. They give it to them in a legit glass. So, I'm sorry, that, that just happened to me, like, a few weekends ago, and I'm just like, just, for some reason I can't get, okay, <laughs> for some reason around here I can't get decent pizza or somebody to pour me a, a shot right. Like, like they're either adding water to iced whiskey or they're putting it in a shot glass. I just, I, I don't get it. I don't know. I think the sun is melting people's brains around here sometimes. <laughs> right. Could be. Could be, man. And up here, it's just freezing them. <laughs> at, least it main, at least it, like, maintains it. It's not rotting as fast. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, but, okay, yeah, that is... So that is our... This is our episode one, or season two, episode one, episode, episode. Um, we didn't discuss what we're going to do on our next season or next episode. I'm sure it'll, it'll probably have something to do with the upcoming holidays and all that good stuff, which, you know, we're getting into that time of year again. Bum, bum, bum. That's right. Uh, which, it's means, coming. which means dealing with family. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, so yeah, Chris, you got anything else to add? Uh, no, man, just, uh, the same as always, uh, you know, I'd love to hear from anybody else listening about their top five video games or, um, you know, what they've struggled through on like a horrible first date or something. Just reach out to us. Let us know what you're thinking. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to probably post this to YouTube first. I'm switching, uh, you know, where we host the podcast. So I'm not exactly sure how long it'll take to, um, switch over the RSS feed. So honestly, if you're listening to this, you might be a very new, uh, brand new listener because, uh, so if you are welcome aboard, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and you'll get more of these and fantastic other things. And we'll let you know what else is coming down the pike. Um, do you say pike or pipe? I say pipe, but I've heard pike. Okay. Cause I think like originated as pike, but then it's so many people said pipe. They ended up taking on pipe. I feel I think pipe. Yeah. Pike makes it, they both make some sense. Yeah, yeah. I think I just say it because of, uh, yeah, that's how I heard it. I think, I, I think pipe, I used to say pipe, but then I heard pike was original, so I'm like, I don't know, okay, I don't know what I'm supposed to say. I feel like either way I say this, someone's going to judge me. <laughs> <laughs> right. There's no right. winning for this. But yeah, all right, so that is our episode, and we will get back to you in the ne- in the near future. So for Chris and myself, you guys take it easy and just remember, make the best of the worst with booze and pop culture. Thanks for listening. All original music is by Kevin McLeod and can be found at incompetech.com. If you can, please rate, review, and spread the word of Two Dudes in a Six-Pack.